How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Today I had Mario, also known by his artist name, Hope is Music, on the show. He dropped hella gems. I hope you guys really enjoy the show. As always, the show was sponsored by This Food 7 Lessons for Boodles and, Ch and Bag Chasers. Dude, I'm serious. We had a profound conversation around masculinity, around uh, his, his, his introduction to music, um, what it's like to aspire for greatness, uh, discipline, um, things that he believes make men strong men and more beautiful men. Uh, guys, this is a great one. Uh, tap in. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Peace and love. I, like, I could do much better, or you know, uh, I could do this and that, but we don't give enough enough credit to ourselves. Yeah. So it's humility then, you think? Yeah, yeah man. It's a humility thing. So I feel like humility is good. Yeah. But there's there's this I think there is a such thing as as too much. Too, too much? Yeah, like 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 for example me being surprised. Okay. And so like when when I think about humility, you know, um I think about uh, someone that that walks into a room and knows what they've done, mm -hmm. but doesn't want to assume right. that everybody knows what they've done. True. Because I feel like that's like my ego. You know, like if I walk into a room and mm -hmm. I expect like, you know, there's something in you that sometimes like I, I'm a creator and I created mm -hmm. this cool ass project. Right. But well, yeah, I think all like all of that as far as us creating things or just people who write is we don't. I mean, at least to myself, it's like when people critically acclaim something or just tell you, hey, you know what, this this is amazing, like it's a good piece of work. I don't really see it that way because I know I could do much more. And I know I could do much better than something that people love. Of course I take it in, but I don't let it dominate me. Because if I get in that feeling like, oh man, like, yeah, it's great, you know, I've done this and that, I get complacent. You know, like, oh, you know, I don't need to strive for more because I already did something that people love or something that people like. So it's that inner hunger that doesn't, it's, sometimes it's a little bit annoying. Like, it doesn't let me bask in the good moments mm -hmm. because I'm always like, okay, that's cool, but what's next? You know, like, it keeps me moving forward. Yeah. So that don't let me bask into the moment. And I have people tell me, hey, man, live the moment, bro. Celebrate this. Like, celebrate this moment. Like, you you won this or you were nominated for this and that like celebrate it you know don't just discard it and keep moving forward because then that's how you miss those good moments bro that you live through your art through your creations bro like you that there's a lot of things that come with everything that we create like me like you know i read your book bro i reposted this and now we are right here in your path just just fucking vibing you know you know so it's like it's something with it you know like it's it always comes from something bro so I mean, if I'm telling you that your your book inspired me in a lot of ways, bro, yeah, man, it did. Especially at the moment I picked it up, you know. Yeah, man. I, yeah, I, I I think you we definitely shouldn't downplay that that intensity, right? Yeah. That that can come from seeing a little a little ladybug fucking walking down the floor, yeah. or a kid smiling with a mm -hmm. fucking paleta on their, right. their face or whatever, right? Like. Or, or a book or, or music and yeah. all these different things. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, I'm a firm believer in like the, the spirit of magic. Obviously I'm not saying that like magic is real and necessarily right, I don't know, it could be. Could be, bro. But I, I, I mean yeah, like that happens. feeling, right? Yeah. I, I, I just call it that for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. And it's very inviting. Yeah. You know, like as you notice, like in, in, my, in my writing pieces, uh, although I can comprehend complex issues i like to express it and and in yeah. the most simplest way yeah. um mainly because when i was growing up and i started reading shit that was like more difficult mm -hmm. i would think to myself and i was like but why is this person so smart and why don't they say mm -hmm. this information in a way for normal people to yeah. really understand it yeah you know that's and that's one thing that i really right struggled as I was going through, through college, for example, mm. you know, so, you know, that's one of the reasons why, why I delivered my message in, in the way that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, let me go ahead and just quickly, yeah. like, introduce yeah, yeah. you, man, to everybody. So, guys, uh, this is Mario. 
Um, he, he's a fantastic uh, artist, and and I, it, it's an honor, bro. Thank you, man. It, it's really, truly an honor. It's an honor being uh, here, too, uh, man. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate um, it. One comment. Uh, were you going to set up your live, or? Yeah, man. Uh, I but mean, how, how are you going to do it? Just maybe having us just talking, you know what I mean? After. If that's cool with after you. After or at the same time? I mean, if it's at the same time, like, yeah, yeah. that cool? Yeah, go ahead, okay. go ahead. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind it at all. That's why I was like, like you want to set it up or, or, no, yeah. or what? Just, I rarely go live, you know, like, to be honest, I rarely, rarely go live on my stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I'd rather, you know, this is I a good know moment. you got some knowledge. For sure. And I want a lot of people to also hear us vibing and dropping jams. Dude, man, because yes. a lot of a lot of young, young up and coming artists follow me. They they like to get advice. So, and we'll uh, talk about it a little bit now. Uh, is there a place I could possibly set set the phone up? Like uh, maybe like find it against that plant right there. Yeah, yeah. that's Go perfect. That's perfect. Do it. Oh, shit. Mind if I move it a little bit, man? However, bro, I don't. You got a nice house, man. Thank you, thank you. So you know, this is this is like the family's house. You okay. know. Um, my father, my mother, you know, they, they, they've struggled uh, pretty much their whole lives as immigrants to get this. Immigrant lifestyle is hard, bro. You know, it, I'm, I'm so blessed, dog. So, you know, we, we jump in many directions and shit. Yeah, man. And that's just the way, mm -hmm. fortunately for y'all, that's the way my brain works. That's um, the creative brain, I think, in general, bro. Yeah, it just completely jumps from one thing <laughs> into the next, bro. Yeah, it's it's it, for me. It brings me great pleasure. Mm. And and the, the the sad part about it though is that when I want to, when I want to share that with people, it's hard. Yeah. Because they don't really want to work through that. You get me? Right. Like they're just like, bro, you're fucking throwing shit everywhere. Yeah. Like stop. And then there's also different personalities and stuff like that, you know, where they'd rather be more like clear cut, <laughs> uh, directed, yeah. and oh, let's do this piece first, bro. You know, let's set the plan up and then let's work, you know, step by step. Exactly. And then there's people that just grab one thing, finish that, then go into the next, and we don't really have a plan. We just try to get shit done. You know what I mean? Yeah, precisely. So, so it, it would, what would you say? Are you more of an organizational person, or are you more of a on the fly uh, and, and, and work in that manner? At this point in my life, I try to be more organized, bro. But back in my early 20s, bro, I was just on the fly, bro. On the go with, with every aspect, bro. With creating, with writing, with music, with every single thing. I was just like all over the place, bro. But now in my early 30s, bro, like I'm more organized. Like I know exactly what to do. Like even as something as simple as leaving the house on time. Like, you know, like I left the house like right now, like around to be 10 because I knew I could encounter some traffic or, or right, 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 my right. my freaking phone would have to recalibrate because it was so hot so thankfully I got right here like a 422 bro right so those things matter bro like I know people my age that don't really have a sense of time like that mm. or just balancing things or just time in general bro but it, it, in this context it matters yeah because you're meeting uh, you're meeting with someone exactly right bro. um and, and I personally have always felt like, yo, bro, we make plans. Like, I said this time for a reason. Yeah. Although, I'm going to be honest, too, right? I'll be late to places and shit, but I always let somebody know. Right. Like, I'll call you and I'll let you know, bro, this happened. You can expect to see me an hour later. Yeah. And, and even though maybe it still might sting a little bit because you're like, fuck, like I you said, like, my time is precious. Now you're just like, it makes sense. Hmm. It makes sense. Handle your business. Of course. Get here safely. Yeah. You know, there's time, but there's a there's a saying in Spanish. I'm not too sure how it says how it is, but they basically say there's more uh, there's more time in life, mm -hmm. specifically our lives. Yeah. Right. Because you could say like the world and the planet is going to live those, on those forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, but but as far as like your creative process, bro. I did want to ask, you know, because yeah. you're you're a hip hop artist. Yes, sir. And I, and I, and I just want to let the house know yeah, right now. Of course. Like, yo, we have. I have a a, a, a legit hip hop artist in the house today. Uh, you know, you're you're, <laughs> you're you're keeping this alive, bro. You Thank know, you, like that. As I listen to the music, the beats, uh, the message, uh, the the words that you choose, like listening uh, to KRS One being like sampled. You know, it's like yeah. you get to really, really see 
you know that you you want to be a hip hop artist. Yeah, man, it's it's a it's a love, bro. It's like a love and hate situation. It's like a relationship with with someone you love so much, but then she, it's like a girl that she's she's amazing, but at the same time she has flaws. <laughs> and then you love her so much because you love her because of how she is that you're able to take all her flaws in. You know, it's like being in love. Like you gotta love somebody enough to put up with all the crazy stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's what hip hop is to me. Like hip hop is it's been a passion like it's a crap like i take it seriously you know like it's a serious thing for me uh it started off as fun as something that kept me out of trouble kept the people around me out of trouble kept us focused um uh, and it just developed into more and more and more and more and it's like you could as long as you treat the music right treat the culture right you can branch out into many different things you know if you exploit the culture for only your own self gain then it's gonna backfire on you because the culture appreciates somebody that's right to it, that treats it well. And if you're branching out, let's say, into making a clothing line, um, if if people know what you did for the culture or for the music, how serious you take your music, they're gonna support you. If you're talking about this and that and, and your music doesn't pack a socially relevant message and you try to create a clothing line about, you know, let's say, shoot this and shoot that, people will go to it. But the people that matter won't, man. And that's how you move ahead in the culture. It's, it's such a beautiful thing, man. There's aspects of the game I don't like. Like I, in my early 30s, I'm, I'm starting to notice that there's people that don't grow as artists. They don't grow, not, not growing as creatively, personal-wise as well. Mm. They're like dudes who are my age that are thinking still like they're in their early 20s or like 18-year-old kids. and in 1915 uh, you know so what does that shift look like in, in, in mindset and mentality and maturity what what's the difference in your opinion between the those yeah. young 20s right. and and like early 30s for example and I'm just curious to like really like see and be like wh what can people expect in a sense yeah. you gotta wrap your age bro mm. what do you thing. mean what do you mean by that so let's say if you're if you're a grown man right you can't be rapping about I'm in the club at like 35, like throwing money up. If you made it that way, like if you're if you're already like a artist, like let's say like Lil Wayne or so, you know, who's already rich, who who has all this all this money that he made from music. You have a big old fan base. If you rap about that, people are gonna eat it up, regardless. If you're an upcoming artist and you want to expand, reach new audiences, if you're already in your 30s and just and you're still talking about that, that won't that won't stick man mm. that won't stick you know you gotta look in the mirror and be like okay what can i put out there that reflects me that reflects my age you know i, I can't be talking about oh you know i got this car i got this i got this and that you know like i'm rocking this chain no because that's like i don't see myself with that and if you don't make that transition you get stuck man you get stuck in a race with kids who are in their 20s and let's be honest, if you play soccer and you run against a kid who's 20, they're going to smoke you, bro. Mm. So you got to find your own lane as well to, to stay relevant around it. Yeah. You know, there's, there's kids I, uh, I mentor musically that are like uh, in the early 20s, man. And they like to hear some of my lyrical stuff. At the same time, they got their own style, their own craft, this new wave. But they like that lyrical stuff, especially from someone that respects it. Like if, you could be some dude that says, oh, you know what? I'm going to drop a track, a, a, a boom bap track. But if you've never done it or you don't respect the boom bap genre, like, and the boom bap is classic hip hop, like uh, the, the stuff that was made in the East Coast, mm. the roots that branched out into the West, into the West Coast here. If you don't respect that, that core and all of a sudden you want to do boom bap and you try to see, show these kids like, hey man, check me out. And they're going to know, bro, like, nah, this is not original. Now, if you're someone that has built, sharpened their blade to be a sharp enough to, to slice beats the, the right way, they're going to gravitate to it. So it's just like, just to bring it back into it is wrap your age, mm. write your age. The message you have has to reflect your experience, your own growth. Right. So... At first, when you said wrap your age, yeah. I saw it like, wrap it up, homie. But in my mm. way, I saw that you're like, you're not a little fucking 17 year old exactly anymore. bro which in a sense kind of it it does make sense and i love the way i love your sports analogy 
mm-hmm. about, bro, you can't keep up with a young guy, bro. Yeah, They're bro, faster. Yes. And you're trying to play their game. You won't be able to. Don't do it. You got to find another lane to keep up with them. Because these kids, there's kids who are dropping tracks every day. They might not be the best. They might not be the most, uh, I mean, in the standards of the industry, like not completely crisp. But they're doing it. I could do the same thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, like I could drop tracks every other day. Every, I mean, like one every month or twice every month. But it's not going to be something I like doing. Because mm. then I'm going to sacrifice quant- quality over quantity. Mm. And I will never want to do that. You know, like if I'm going to drop something or put something out, it's something that you that the lyrics I'm going to put on the paper and page on from the pen into the paper are going to resonate with you. But like I want to write something that will stick with you. How much time do you spend into crafting a song from the beginning to the end? If you had to roughly say. Uh, it's a process, man. It's not. So, sometimes it's a lengthy process. Sometimes it might be really, really smooth. Like if I'm in the groove, like, and I'm reading a, I'm reading a book by Common right now, and and he talks about getting into the creative flow of things. Like if you are already getting creative before you approach the studio session or before you are in the studio, everything's gonna flow to you mm. naturally. So it's like if I'm already in the groove of things and I hear a really, really, really cool beat and. I start thinking about the concept, okay, what can each verse have, you know, like, maybe it could be a story, the verse is an introduction, the middle verse is like the, the hype, and then the end is the uh, conclusion of the story. If it's a feature, you know, I just let the beat dictate, you know, like if it's a deep, profound beat, then I could get profound with it. If it's something playful, I could get playful with it. So it's it's different things. Like I don't like to put too much restrictions on the creativity because then the stress sweeps in. You know, <laughs> like it seeps in. You know, and, and the last thing you I want to do or the artists want to do is get the stress involved with their creative side because it started as an outlet for us, for all the creative individuals, for us to not be stressed, for us to deviate from all the stress. Of course, if you're doing it at a professional level, there will be some stress with mm. it. If you're taking it serious there will be a stress with it. It's just up to the artist to know when to disconnect a bit, go do something else, possibly jog, do some workouts, like do some push-ups, switch your mind into something else and then come back to it. Yeah. So, it, so I mean, it, it basically depends. Like if I'm, it, it, like it could take me about 25 minutes to write something and a hook, or sometimes I will have a chorus first and then one, when the chorus comes first, it's easier because then everything flows better. Or it, it could just take me like, man, I could get stuck in a song and, and, and take like a whole week to write a verse, man. So it's, it just depends. It's it varies, a crazy process. It varies. And, yeah. and putting a time restriction is yeah, definitely yeah. limiting to the possibilities. Exactly. Right? Like if every day you pulled up, you're like, I have an hour to yeah. get this shit done. Yeah. You'd probably be stifling the fuck out of yeah. your own creativity. Um, and, and, and in regards to preparing yourself, mm-hmm. right? Or as you said, Common is talking about express yourself creatively, basically yes. at all times. Yes. Because that's going to get you ready for your scheduled time. And then unfortunately, hey, some people have to be scheduled, mm-hmm. right? I have a job. Of course. So if I can do my job and then afterwards you get some time, handle it. Right. But I think, you know, as, as only a writer, mm-hmm. I don't need a studio. Right. Uh, so I can pretty much, if I have an opportunity, like... I, Every time I get these little piercing thoughts, mm. like I grab my phone and I have like a notebook okay. and I, and I drop it there. Right. Good. And, Good. and so in the long run, it's always just little thoughts. Yeah. Just a bunch of little thoughts and little thoughts, of, but it's keeping me going. Right. Cause I know they're, like I said, it's a piercing thought mm-hmm. and a piercing thought. All you need to do is bring it up and if it's around the right energy, the right minds, it, 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 it can it, it can suck. It has a uh, suction. Yeah. And and then, and then once that once it's absorbed, you know, um, ideas are very um, fiery. Mm-hmm. Once you absorb something, you want to express it. Yeah. You want to deliver it. Most definitely, bro. You gotta release that, man. Um, so, go. I mean, going back into the point, like how long it could take. Sometimes, believe it or not, for an artist, 
having that date, that timeline, that date, and pressure could also work well, man. Like you know you have to finish this mm-hmm. by this time, so you yeah. know you got no room but just to stay focused. Because like going back into the previous point, is sometimes our minds will just drift and wander off and not finish something at the right moment, or finish this, or just switch into something else. But then having that studio session that you know you paid for, that you know you have to finish this by, let's say, the next week on Tuesday, it will force you into sitting down and just getting that done, bro. So, crunch time. So sometimes that, that's needed too. Crunch time, diamonds are made under pressure, bro. Mm. Sometimes people work better under pressure. You know, I heard a quote by this guy named Wes Watson. It's like, real men are shine under pressure. You know what I mean? Real men are made under pressure. So it's like not just musically, creatively, but personal wise, like under pressure, sometimes we are able to overcome things or act in ways that we never re- uh, really thought about on the regular. So sometimes pressure is needed too, bro. It's just, it's just a crazy process, bro. No, absolutely. Yeah, it's just a crazy creative process. Bro. It, and look, man, it's, it's okay if you, if you crack under pressure. Yeah, true that. Because yeah. next time you come around, you're gonna realize like, Oh, that, that put me over. You know what right. I'm saying? And you could tweak a little more, a little move, a little yeah. move here to the point where like, you can maybe tiptoe around that, mm-hmm. maybe go a different direction, uh, apply pressure from, from a different side of the equation. Right. And, and, and in general, it's true that the greats shine mm-hmm. under intense pressure. Yeah. Me, I, I, you know, I've always been a sports guy. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, imagine being, do you remember Derek Fisher's 0.4 shot with the Lakers? I think so, bro. It was huge. Yeah. It was huge. Mm-hmm. He literally, it was to win the game. Um, he was like scrambling. Um, he got it and he has 0.4 to release. Mm-hmm. So he got it and let it go as soon as possible. And it was a swish moment, And then it, it went in. Yes. Yeah. So can you imagine that pressure, bro? Oh, man. Like, I don't think I've ever faced that yeah. that level of pressure in life, but yeah. if faced by the opportunity, I'd rather I'd rather shoot my shot mm-hmm. and fail, and and take on the enormous like mm-hmm. uh, just um, I don't know what exactly what would happen, right? Right. But when you do go through that situation. And, and you shoot your shot and you make it or you miss, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it was going to be a great experience. Right. You learn from it, right? Yes. Because you were at that situ- like at that place with all that pressure. Even, like you mentioned, even if you miss, bro, like there's still something that you can gain from that, you know? And uh, to your point, in the uh, shot <clears throat> that that was made by Fisher, I think that, uh, you know, athletes, they tend to rehearse and practice constantly. They constantly rehearse, constantly practice, constantly do it. So they are putting themselves, not in the same pressure, because I, I doubt that they, they will have the same pressure during practice as they have on the game with everybody watching them with the clock ticking. But it's the repetition of them possibly shooting all the time. So in them repeating that same shot, constantly rehearsing, constantly practicing that same moment, Aside from, of course, the timing and that game is what allowed them to, it's what allowed him to make that shot, bro. Mm. Of course, he could have missed as well, but it's the practice that he prepared himself to be in that moment. So when the moment actually came to him, he was prepared, he was ready. Yeah, he probably, you know, it, it was a shot. You know, it could have been a, a, a miss as well, but he made it. He's like, damn. So pro- possibly after he made that shot, he thought himself, man, all that practice was worth it. Because I mastered that shot. I knew how to do that. And I feel like if we prepare ourselves as, as men to be under that pressure of that moment, or not, you know, because I mean, a lot of pressure is, not, is also not healthy, man. A lot of pressure is not healthy at all, man. But I mean, if we prepare ourselves, prepare ourselves academically, professionally, physically, mentally, to be at a moment where we might be under pressure, and we know, how, and, and we practice and rehearse how to handle it. We'll be better off. We'll be well off. Yeah. Because when a situation arises, then we know exactly how to handle it. And and I'm very grateful for that for that for that teaching, bro. Because uh, some people don't want to put in the work. 
Yeah. Some people don't want to rehearse. Most definitely. And and it doesn't make any sense because yeah. the more time and effort you put into your craft, whether mm -hmm. it's drawing, painting, painting. singing, yeah. uh, whatever it is, you are limiting your own potential. Uh, a football coach once told me, he said, uh, I don't give a fuck about potential because uh, potential is setting you up for failure because mm -hmm. you keep thinking about what you can be mm -hmm. instead of being right. what you can be. And the only way you can be your fullest version of yourself is if you commit yourself to that. Right. And and by committing yourself to that, uh, it's going to look differently, obviously, per of person. Course. Of course. But it has to be a consistency. Yeah. And and without this consistency, uh, you're probably just going to be doing a disservice to mm -hmm. yourself. But, you know, you talk a lot or you've spoken a few things about, like, what characteristics make mm. perhaps uh, a solid man or mm. um, a strong man and i i think that's a uh, that's a very very important dialogue discussion to have because on one side we've learned right that there's pieces i'm not necessarily saying that you agree with this but i think there's a narrative in society that says that to be a man means to be like aggressive or um, physically strong mm -hmm. only, um, or domineering, yeah. right? Yeah. So that those are pieces of this bigger narrative, right? Mm -hmm. of, like, of like the masculine energy. Right. But perhaps there's different types of masculinity. Of course, of course. Right? Of course. And so being that there's different types of masculinity, yeah. what type of masculinity, uh, do you try to um, just either uh, utilize in your own life yeah. or or the one that you're a fan of that you really cherish and say like this is what we should strive to be as as males in society I try to I try to keep my word I try to be loyal and I try to be uh, perseverant Mm. The, those are those those three things, man. Those are the three things I guide myself as. Or instead of persevering, just have the discipline. You know, mm. keep my word, be loyal, and have the discipline. Because I feel like with the discipline, I will be able to wake up every morning at the same time, work out, run, take care of my mind. Um, I'll be able to get to work on time. I'll be able to do things that I plan on later on in the day because I already visualize it in my mind. I have it in my schedule. Keep my word because, you know, there's a lot of people who don't, you know, and let's face it, we've all been there, man. Like I've broken promises. I haven't kept my word before, but you know, as I get older, I want to keep my word on the things I want to do, on the things I tell other people on what I said. And loyalty is really big for me, man. Like I, I believe I've learned to be loyal, you know, in, in a lot of aspects in my life, not just emotionally, uh, but also to, to my family, you know, to my girlfriend and everything else. Because uh, there's people who nowadays, they would just gravitate towards someone and pretend to be loyal just because that person's giving them an opportunity mm. instead of real loyalty. And you say pretend. Like I know people that will get close to somebody just because somebody has this many followers or they're gonna give them a shout out on their Instagram page like and that that goes back into the part of me not liking some aspects of the music game mm. of the hip-hop game because I see so much of that man so much of that and, and it's it sometimes sucks man you see people who are so talented on their own but then they gravitate towards someone that you you know they don't carry themselves right mm. you know of course like I'm not perfect you know nobody is but you're like, man, like, why are they going to this person if my friend or somebody I know is such a solid person? Why are they gravitating towards someone that is known for being shady, is known for doing bad business, just because they got so much, so much, so much followers and they think it's going to, if they are close to them, their spotlight is going to shine on them. Right, what's the whole idea of cloud chasing? Exactly. And bro. it's a disease. It sucks, bro. It sucks. The good thing about that is that at least to some degree, we do happen to have a good radar for, for bullshit. Yeah. And it, 
it really kind of dispels yourself. Yeah. Like, if you're walking around with those intentions, mm -hmm. like, I can feel it. Yeah. And I'm just not going to want to collaborate with you anyways. There's people who don't feel it, though. Man. Especially, like, going back to all these young artists I'm, I'm trying to, like, guide. I, I always tell them, like, be careful of people who in this business might do this, 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 and that. Like, I give them three key points, like, and they take note to it. Because I've been through all those things. So now I know, I'm like, okay, I need to watch out for people that don't have the best intentions, that they might move a certain way or be a little snakeish, because that's part of the music game, sadly, you know? Yeah. It's part of that. I would just say part of the entertainment business, which is, is what kind of messes it up for a lot of people that got pure intentions, you know? So it's like, they categorize everybody in a big old, they throw us in a big old box because of a few bad apples out there you know and it's like not everybody's that way I feel like at this point I become a little tired of the music business like the music game like I've been a little disappointed and tired of it so I try to now move up my own pace you know guide new talent show them the ropes a little bit that nobody got to show me at that age to not make the same mistakes or follow people follow false leaders so it's just that you know, yeah, you know. mentorship is very, very it key. Is. It is. But before we get into that, I do want to kind of talk about your three points. Um, one of them being um, discipline. Yeah. Uh, you said perseverance first, and then discipline, which is basically they're very they're a little different, but discipline is more important. Yeah. Um, nah, they're both important. But like, <laughs> yeah, but like the they discipline. Both are, so Jocko Jocko Willink, uh, he's like this big badass seal guy, hmm. and he has a book that. It's called Discipline Equals Freedom. Okay. And it, it essentially, it's I might like, have to read that after this one. It's yeah. It's intriguing, right? Yeah. It's it's literally what he's talking mm. about, man. And and you know we're people, we're humans in this pursuit, right? Mm. In this, it's like um like the ultimate level of freedom is is really what m my soul desires at, at every moment of my day which is kind of an obsession but it's one of my healthy obsessions mm -hmm. like everyone that gets to be great at something has an obsession like kobe was obsessed with basketball yeah um whoever right they're you're they're obsessed with something so i, I pursue it mm -hmm. daily right and you can't do those things unless you're disciplined right and i've talked about this so much uh to younger people that mm -hmm. are fucking up in the classroom for example yeah right and they're like oh it's because like damn mister like i'm not motivated and this and that and i'm like look bro motivation is here right now well, what happens when you leave exactly you like motivation is not gonna remain forever mm -hmm. but what is gonna remain forever is your discipline exactly because it's a discipline is literally you doing it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying exactly and and I want people to exercise that discipline. Do every day do something difficult. Right. I, it doesn't matter what it is. I keep it simple on myself. Working out is not is not a, a an intellectually gruesome activity. Mm -hmm. That means that all I gotta do is do it with my body. But it's difficult. It's difficult on my body. Right. Like I, I'm going through it. And I fucking hate my life. But it's right. It's but it's my discipline, discipline yes. bro. It's probably and if discipline. I don't do that, I'm gonna be fucking just completely jerking off <laughs> and i need some balance right right you know what i mean yeah i tell everybody and and, I, and i'm very clear about this like i like to party hard but i'm gonna fucking work hard first yes what's one without the other man i mean if you don't work hard then what are you partying hard for like <laughs> what's to celebrate you know what i mean That's if you haven't point. worked hard then what are you celebrating for you know mm. like so I kind of see it the same way, man. Like if I don't work hard, like I feel like I gotta earn it, you know? Like if I wanna party or just, you know, relax or like have a drink or whatever, I have to earn it, bro. Mm. If not, I'm gonna feel like, man, like what am I relaxing for if I've been home all day, bro? Like at least like, let me run a couple of miles. Like let me do like some push-ups or something to feel good, work around the house if I want my day off, man. And if at the end of everything, let me get that drink that I've earned the whole day. Or just let me do something I like to do for myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if I just let my desires run me, bro, then I'm not going to get nothing done. I mean, if I let all my desires run me 
I'm not gonna get nothing done, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, there is. Second, brother. Uh, I think my my phone about it. No problem. Problem. Let me see, bro. Uh, but yeah, like when you think about there's a uh, like some of the like Buddhist principles. Yeah. They say that you know um, it's out of desire that yeah. suffer suffering is bred of desire, right? Yeah. I don't really feel and agree with that, you know, because I desire a lot of things and make me really happy, and 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 also like I I'm I'm about challenging this idea that I have to feel guilty about things, you know, okay. and this is new in my life because uh, guilt is something that we're taught in our culture from a very early age, and it's about control. Yeah. Now, imagine the women in in our cultures. Imagine how they feel, and I I saw it always. You know, I was a little kid. I was like, damn, why are you different? <laughs> you know, yeah. but of course I was kind of good with it because I was like, well, I'm the good one in this mm-hmm. in this equation, you know. Right. Like the freedom right. that I got of us being boys, you know. Yes, Damn. yes. And obviously, there's whatever reasons for it, not to justify any of that. Um, loyalty, mm. like, damn, like loyalty is is I'm I'm loyal myself, bro. Like, you know, I'm loyal to to my boys, and uh, I was loyal to to my girl when I had one. Um, and I'm loyal to myself, bro. Most importantly, like sure. I, I don't at this point in my life, bro. I'm not willing to to cut pieces of myself for others. Okay. Um, because I don't think there's a necessity for that. Mm-hmm. Like I think we should just get together and and vibe in harmony okay. uh, without feeling like you're losing a piece of yourself. Right. Now that's not. I'm not talking about not being able to to um, what's it called when you reach a middle ground? Uh, essentially, that you, um, what is it called when you, let's say your girl wants this and you want this compromise. There you go. Compromise. I'm I'm down to compromise. Compromise mm. is a little different, especially in a relationship. Right. Because now that yeah, means that you love that person. Right. And to love one person means mm-hmm. to. Uh, be there for them spiritually right. and help them grow as much as possible. And if compromising is something that's really important to you, yeah. you know, it's different. Right. I think compromising is good as long as you don't lose too much of yourself. Because then when you and the person you're with happen to split, then you have to walk that uphill battle again to find yourself through all the emotions all the memories if you lose yourself that much then yeah which it tends to happen and it does it's tough to it's tough to not you know not lose yourself as much with, with that person man so that's why heart breaks up because then you gotta refine yourself mm-hmm. and it could take a lot of time like a lot of time bro like it could take maybe a year or more than that and you're constantly trying to find yourself again that you right. lost yourself with that person because that's what happens like compromise is good you just have to i think keep moments for yourself as much as your partner has to keep moments on themselves to not lose your inner force like if i if like if i was with somebody and they wouldn't let me make music or they wouldn't let me uh do stuff that i do to just keep right. my mind well yeah. then that's when it will become a problem because then i'm losing core things about me you know, like I will be losing a lot of core things that make my that, that make me me. You know what I mean? Right. And there's a lot of people who do that, bro. Like there's a, I've had a couple of friends who from the their girlfriends weren't the most supportive, and they're making music or just doing stuff, and they told them straight out, like, hey man, you know what? Your shit sucks. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you won't get far in this. You won't do this and that. And I get it. Honesty is good, but at least tell the person. You know, and there's ways of saying things, bro. And I mean, they don't have to be a fucking exactly, dick. Exactly, exactly, bro. Uh, they could be like, you know what? It's cool, but you need more practice, you know. Or, or like, let let me offer you some feedback. That's not the best route for you. Mm-hmm. Maybe try to do something else. Listen to more music. See what you can do, and then get inspired and go back to it. But it still needs practice. But if a person doesn't want you to do something because you're spending more time doing your passion than with them. They're projecting their own insecurities onto you, mm. and they're trying to make you focus only on them, 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 and that's when the toxicity starts. You know, that's when the manipulation, the controlling, all of that, and that's never healthy in a relationship, bro. Never. And I've been in situations like that. You know, what I mean, like I've been in situations where I've been the one doing the manipulating, and I've been also on the other side of the coin, 
so it's all about learning that like and i've learned now bro like i'm just you know <laughs> you know my girl is doing her thing on the pad I, i'm in my home studio you know so i i could be over there listening to beats uh writing some stuff going outside to run so and you learn that you know because when you're first with somebody you want to spend all the time with that person mm. because you're finding each other you know it's mm. that warm happy feeling if it keeps going for that long that you don't do nothing without each other then that's a problem bro mm. it's a problem i mean it's yeah man. so compromise is it's not always it's good but you gotta keep your, yourself you like your core values gotta be you you know mm. No doubt. I mean, yeah. and, and there's so much, there's so much that 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 came out of that, and in 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 thinking about, because relationships are important. Yeah, of course. Uh, especially, it seems obvious, no, that the older you get, mm -hmm. the more likely you are willing to want to share a piece of your life yeah. with somebody else. Um, I don't know exactly why. Is it biology playing a trick on us? I have no idea. Yeah. Right. But the truth is, is that we do crave. To be with another person, right? right. And, and so it's fundamental that we start learning how to interact with each other in healthy ways, mm -hmm. because it does feel like like an internal death. Yes. When you is. are with these people, and like you start to bleed slowly from within, and it's a slow and painful death. Hmm. It's that stress. Yeah. That man. stress that's literally like fucking killing you. Yeah. And. You don't know how to communicate in effective manners that are healthy, so you end up in this really fucked up situation. Uh, so it is really important. Yeah. It's really important that we that that we learn to navigate these waters and Most and and on one side, like to go back to like your your ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Your your three principles on how to be a solid man. You know, you were talking about discipline, um, and you talking about loyalty. What was the third one? The third one was. Uh Keeping my word. Keeping your Keeping word. My word. That's another one that's gonna Keeping help you word. be in a good relationship. Yeah. Cause and and you know what? One of my brothers, Ozzy, a brilliant guy, dude, brilliant guy. Uh one of those folks that was gangbanging in the streets and now they're out there hitting the neighborhood. You okay. know what I'm saying? Um he taught me that. He taught me this through a story and I won't get into the whole story because there's more to talk about our, yeah. our, our, our your own life. Um that was it. That was one of the principles about keeping mm -hmm. your word. And he said, you cannot be a good man, mm -hmm. uh, um, a solid man, solid, if, if you are not uh, keeping your word. Of course. And, and ever since then, man, I if I can't keep my word, bro, I'm not going to say nothing. Yeah. Like, I'm just not going to put myself in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, but being honest with people and keeping your word, bro, is something that I really, 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 really try my best. To stay on, because uh, I love impacting people, especially let's say, uh, not necessarily only women, but people in general. Mm -hmm. Like I want people to have a good, healthy perception of what a man is. Right. Because I, for for rightful reasons, you know, there's mm -hmm. a huge narrative about like uh, fuck men and this and that, and I know where the pain is coming from. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's not just coming because. Of uh, some random ideology or whatever, like it's coming from like thousands, hundreds of years of, of oppression. Yeah. You know? Yeah, most definitely. But that's why it's important for me to treat you with the most respect possible, right. to be honest, to keep it real, yep. from the top mm -hmm. to the end. All of that. And I'm, I'm so okay with, with being temporary, bro. Like, this is one of the things about life that is most common and, 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 yeah, that's that's gonna. It's one of the biggest truths truths that I've come aware of at this at this point in life mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of transitions in life. Yeah, and yeah. That everything is temporary. Yeah. yeah. So you know, putting all these things together, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of going back to that point about like like masculinity. Um, do you think there that there's a difference between and I don't know how you would coin this, but mm -hmm. as I kind of got into some some reading, like a lot of people would say they would call it like a divine masculinity versus like the toxic right. masculinity. Right. Do you believe in that, or do you think that as human beings, you're always gonna be a little bit of both? Is there toxic masculinity? Hell yeah, there is, bro. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, there is, bro. And we are all raced with it. Especially 
Latinos, bro. Like we're raised by it. We don't even recognize it until later on, bro. So it's like, you know, I got friends who believe that their women is never gonna have to work, you know, they don't wanna have their women working. They want they don't want them having a lot of goals and all of that. And I'm like, yo, weird, bro, like, <laughs> why do you think that way, bro? Like like, a, like American face? Yeah, bro. Sheesh. That are race like that, bro. And I'm like, why would you want your women like that, bro? And they they like that, dude. What's about power, right? Yeah, it's like and I there's no other choice like no other thought goes in my mind, like, okay, they've been raised that way. They mm. they've heard it from their tios, like their uncles, like your woman never has to do this, like she has to do that because if she goes outside, she goes to work, she's gonna meet another man and it goes from insecurities, man. Mm. The insecurities that we have as men of not wanting our women out there, bro. Right. If your woman's gonna cheat, she's gonna cheat regardless. Like you, you can't do nothing to Facts. stop it, bro. No, you can't. You can't like, Especially in today's world. The same way, like if if uh, if we are gonna cheat, no matter how good our woman is and we don't see it and we don't recognize it, when the thought arrives it's gonna happen. Yeah. So it's like, there's no way to stop your partner from really doing what they want to do, or really knowing what's gonna go down. It's we just have to trust them, and that's where the trust issues come in. Do we really trust the person you're with? Do you really trust what they're doing when they're not with you? Right. Bell Hooks talks about that a lot, bro. This is a book I recommend for all of us. Yeah. To read, which is all about love. Yeah. And, whoo, I was one of those books where I felt like a piece of shit because <laughs> I was, oh, I was like. Man. I was looking at myself in the mirror, bro. Dude. Like that book was a straight up mirror. And there was no way I could run away. Bro. I just couldn't. And I was reading that book through the mist of trying to save my yeah. last relationship. Okay. I've tried. Yeah. You know? But like, there's certain time frames in your life where lessons must come. Yeah. And yeah. the greatest lessons are always in the fucking hurt. Right, right. Be because estás aferrado. Of course. You know, and to a curious, creative, powerful people. Yeah. I think that's what blows my mind the most. Mm -hmm. Is that I I got into me so several people where I'm just like, you felt empowered by me, <laughs> bro. Man, I'm gonna tell you this, bro. Like, I'm a man that I would never like to read, bro. Ooh. Everybody would always tell me, Mario, you know what? You should read this and you should read that. Mm -hmm. I would open books, scheme through them and be like, nah, close them. Or like if I would read, like I'll, like I'll read it because I have to at school, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But recently, see my girl bought this book a long time Wait, ago. Wait, your girl bought it? Yeah, she bought it at a, a store in, in, in... Vital? Vital, yeah. So Wait, she, who's the girl? I don't know her, but I just want her name there. So in case someone's it, watching, they're like, it was her. My girl, Erica. You know, you bought this book, so <laughs> thank you. You know, she's probably watching right now too on the live, bro. It's so very good. Yeah, so she bought it. We had it at the pad for a long time, bro. So that book was just there sitting, you know, just chilling. Because I never that's picked up a awesome, book. Bro. Bro. So that's how I know it's special. So you know, I was just there and recently a couple of months back, you know, I've always suffered from a lot of anxiety, bro. Mm. A lot of it. And I guess it comes from me always not feeling stable because you know, me and my family migrated here, so everything I knew was always uprooted. So I always have to move around. I, I always have to adapt to new cultures, learn on the fly, learn on the go. You know, I never had nobody to guide me as much. You know, I've always had to stand up front and guide my family through the jungle, and I'm the one that chops the, all the bushes, you know, and paves the way. So I guess every now and then I get patches of anxiety in my life. So at those moments, I tend to deal with it in certain ways. Back then, I would over drink, bro. And that got me into some trouble. Because over drinking numbs you, right? Exactly. So then it lowers your vibration. So then you got to keep a high vibration by taking care of your mind and body, bro. Mm -hmm. When you're going through like a lot of anxiety. Yeah, you can take some medication. But at the same time, that's like putting a small bandage on a bleeding wound. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you're not really solving it. Exactly. Anything. So it's like the one thing I always thought is like, man, I always felt like there was something missing, like I needed some knowledge, like something else. And and I, I get anxiety in transitional parts of my life, which me in my early 30s is like, okay, like I'm not really that young anymore. I'm not really that old. I, I have to now do something different that the Mario in his 30s is gonna mark or something different that I will remember the Mario in his 30s for. So then that book was always there, but I'm not gonna lie. But like, How long was it there? 
Huh? Like how oh, long? Bro, was I was there for like almost a year, bro. It was just there on the same spot, and I would always pass by it and look at the curb. Or like I'll walk up the uh, stairs and see that donkey there just throwing up the west side, bro. <laughs> I was just like, what's up with this book, bro? I would walk up and down, like I would just be in the couch, just chilling. Until one day, bro, like I just had the time and I just started reading it, bro. Because I needed it, bro. Like I felt like I needed some extra knowledge, some extra guidance that I didn't have on my own, dude. And then the way you guys wrote it, bro, it's so easy to gravitate towards it, bro. You guys wrote it perfectly, bro, with the words, the slang, bro, like the freaking analogies. Like you guys use a lot of music from nowadays, like it was dope bro and just the fact that you guys have like a little place to write at the end and you guys ask questions mm. that empowers men to journal bro and journaling is important men too bro because we go through a lot bro true so then you guys having that little question time at the end journal stuff man i was like this is dope it's interactive like we get knowledge at the same <laughs> time we get to journal bro and ever since i read you guys's book now I'm on my third, bro. I read like about three books in two months, bro. Wow. No lie. And this is com- this is coming from, from a man who hated reading, dude. Wow. And now I'm reading all the time, bro. So that's how I know it's special, dude. It opened up doors, and now now I feel like I have so much more knowledge, bro. Like I read the Charlemagne book, I read the Rizza book, mm. and now I'm reading Common's book on uh, how to love. And mm. it's like you mentioned on that love book, he's painting himself he's talking about his story about a lot of love in his life and how he didn't know how to love people like how important love is in his life and you get to see yourself in the words bro in the message mm-hmm. so now I, I'm I rediscovered the importance of reading bro so that's how I know it's special dude absolutely because it came from somebody that hated reading dude, dude I and, hated it and, and that is no so love. special dude so at one point that was my intention. Yeah. My intention was to spark the mind Bro. of a human to to expedite their process of self-exploration in in literature. Because I knew mm-hmm. how transformational like literature is. Yeah. So I'm down for videos. This is a video. And it helps. Yeah. It, like people fuck with it. Hell yeah. But there's something extra about you sticking words in your yeah. brain. Mm-hmm. Where they just start spinning and swimming and re- literally restructuring All of that. the wiring of your mind. All of that, bro. And it's beautiful, man. Like that's that's a yeah. that's a wonderful testimony um, in 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 creation and following your spirit and following your passion in in writing in in in, in living your best and, and truest most authentic self. Mm-hmm. You know. That shit gets me in trouble, bro. <laughs> For real? Sort of. I think recently I've been pretty good. Mm. Um, but I, I aspire to be that way, but it trips people out. You mean like sometimes you say things with no filter? Basically. Okay. Basically, but like my intentions are never malignant. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to hurt nobody, mm-hmm. but words do yeah. hurt. And nowadays, people are extra sensitive too, bro. That's true. They got cancel culture and all this stuff. It's like, bro, let just you know what I mean. Like, it's a little bit out of control. It's mm-hmm. always good to have some some filter and some tone, but there's sometimes it just it, it's a little too much sometimes, bro. It it is. Um, so on one side, I, I, I'm pro being sensitive, but in an emotional way. Well, look, I, I, I'm, not, I'm gonna try not to contradict myself in what I'm gonna say. Um, but essentially, I think it's great to be a sensitive human being. Yeah. But I think you should always l- know how to defend yourself. Of course. So, of course. for example, I don't really believe in turning another cheek. Mm-hmm. I do believe that turning another, turning your cheek can be important uh, in certain situations. Of course. Especially if you know it's going to bl- over blow up and something harmful is really going to happen. Mm-hmm. I would rather maybe do it then. Mm-hmm. But if I feel... Uh, like legitimately um, either physically threatened or emotionally threatened mm-hmm. I think in certain situations I might defend myself of course uh, if you have to yeah and so so I think you we need to be like sensitive souls but we should always know how to fight 
mm-hmm. intellectually and physically. Physically too. Of and I think it comes from a place of like, I want to be empathetic to humanity, but I've also known what's happened to people like us right. when we don't know how to fight. Right. Because people will come at you in different ways, bro. Exactly. They'll come at you physically and mentally. Exactly. So it's like, and spiritually too, if somebody does some brujería on you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, you got to be careful, bro. So it's like, you know, like the more we know how to defend ourselves, the better. Like, yeah. As you said, you know. But you speaking, it. About, speaking about brujería, you know, I think all of Latin America yeah. is very much involved in these deep, traditional, um, pre-colonial ways mm-hmm. and and we call it brujería right so hey i don't know shit about this by the way i just like to talk of course yeah so well, most definitely let's say there's like let's say there's the white one the black one whatever black black magic white magic and all that exactly yeah. at the end of the day it's still magic or whatever yeah they call it brujería but so dude recently like i'm really into everything mm-hmm. as you might have discovered everything yeah <laughs> hey, that's good bro hey, that's good. I, I was I was, yeah. I was learning from shamanes okay and Shamanists are basically just maestros. They are from all over the world, mm-hmm. uh, mainly Africa, and it seems like uh, all of like Latin America, but from the from the indigenous ways. Yeah. Right. So I was I was I was going from one teacher to the next, and I was getting other other information, you know, like understanding it, grappling with it, mm-hmm. and, and trying to see what, where it fit in my own scope of, of life and things yeah. like that. But I only bring that. Because the last one, a couple days ago, his name was Puma. Puma. And, and he, came nice. from the, he came from the Incas. That's dope. So he was, That's dope. he was doing the ceremony. It was all online, by the way. Um, he was doing the ceremony from the mountains of Peru. That's fresh, dude. Right? That's dope. And he did it for a reason. Yeah. Because he believes truthfully in the natural medicine of, of, man, of nature. Yeah. The mountains, the streams, the wind, the yeah, fire. Then, because we're big on that. The elements of life. Mm-hmm. So, as he did, as he explained everything, and I'm not gonna reiterate his points or nothing because mm-hmm. I feel like that would be a dishonorable thing to do mm-hmm. um, because I would not do an honor to his own teachings. Right. But at the very end, it, the way that he concluded um, our, the whole uh, his whole ceremony. Mm-hmm. Was by by lighting up some some um, Palo Santo mm-hmm. and trip out. Palo Santo's best, bro. Trip out. As soon as he started lighting it up, the winds picked up. Damn. And this, to me, that was a miracle. Yeah. It was like forever, never, never. I will always know that like God is always listening. Mm-hmm. If because it, it's the same thing. Like God in the universe, or it's all energy, bro. Yeah, it's like it's always around us, bro. Exactly. Always, always, exactly. always. And for the wind, right, mm. to be at, there at that precise moment, right? I, I swear, bro. It, look, they could have been doing something in the camera behind, but why? Mm. Why are they exactly. that thirsty to sell this? I'm not too. Sh- I'm not. I'd rather buy the idea mm-hmm. that it's a genuine intention uh-huh. from ancient ways to heal our our planet right and i just wanted to share that bro because it was a, it was a random thought that connected to this idea of like our ancestral knowledge mm. and it's inside of us you know despite whatever i may look right someone may look at me and they might be like oh well you're like i don't know a whiter or a lighter skinned mexican and i'll be like okay sure you know mm. but what about everything else that's deeply yeah. inside of me spiritually um intellectually mm-hmm. like there are strands that reach out to pretty much ideas and philosophies from all over the world so am i really just um an ally guy am i really just a mexican guy am i really no i don't think so right i think it's... i'm just human yeah i believe that you know, our ancestors, some of the, the roots and the blood of our ancestors are in us. And it just takes one little thing to, to tap into that and for us to become interested in that. Like, mm. you know, me, you know, the Peruvian, like I got some, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got some, possibly a little bit of the Inca in me. Like, of course, like just a little bit, you know, but that's why I, 
you know, the Incas lived in the Andes, you know, in the mountains. So for some reason, I feel like I've always liked being in the mountains, bro. I love to go hiking. I love to go camping in the mountains. I always seek going to the mountains, bro. Mm. And in some way, I'm like, damn, is the Inca in me trying to go back home? You know what I mean? Like, it's, I always like to go into mountains to hike the trails, to do this and that. But in the Incas, they, they showed a lot of respect to the mountains, to the earth, you know? And they used to label some of the mountains as gods. And mm. they all had different names for them. That's why in Cusco, over there in Peru, like a lot of the mountains have a different name, because for them, they were uh, they were like their gods, like the ones who they would always do uh, rituals to. Because as long as the mountains were happy, then they had a good harvest, they had a lot of rain, they had food and a lot of abundance. The mountains and the sun; those were the two things that the Incas really believed in: the sun and the mountains. You know, so yeah, man, I feel like we all have a little bit of our ancestors with us a little bit of everything as you mentioned as well because who knows how many people have have come before us have uh, integrated mixed to make us what we are now for us to be right here so we have a little bit of everything you know back then in Peru like in the I think in the 30s in the 20s like there were Chinese people there there were um, Middle Eastern people there so there was a lot of integration yeah, yeah so we might have a little bit of everything man. right yeah like of course there's Spanish everywhere but you know there's always a lot of a lot of integration from different cultures man no doubt yeah no doubt and, and I like to I like to honor the ancestors bro mm -hmm. because I, I would not be here mm -hmm. and I, I cherish this life so much bro I just nah, I think I'm a little lucky in that I've discovered really how how beautiful it all is mm. I, I I could reasonably explain why I think it's beautiful mm. but for the time being I just want to say that life is beautiful it is bro it is and it's not gonna be easy life is not easy at all bro uh, happiness doesn't last all, all, often it just comes in patches you know like it just comes in every now and then a moment where you feel really blessed really happy a lot of times it's a lot of struggles man and the happiness you gotta cherish it because it doesn't last that long you know at least in my experience you know that's something that my dad told me he's like you gotta cherish those happy moments because sometimes those happy moments won't last that long hmm. and this is coming from from us as immigrants you know being away from our family um my grandparents died my parents what my dad he was undocumented at the time so, so he wasn't able to go back and see his parents late to rest you know so he has a lot of uh, sadness in him and I see that in him you know he has he sometimes probably thinks like man was the right choice made in bringing my family over here because of all, all this stuff that we've missed you know but at the same time it's like it's better being here we have so much opportunity especially now that a lot of countries in South America are really different nowadays bro like it's really hard for, for people to shine and overcome um, and not just you know to downplay it on the uh, on the left but a lot of you know countries are becoming communist so and that's 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 not the talk but uh, yeah so it's gonna be harder for people to shine you know what I mean mm. so it's that's why you know after everything we've missed after everything that we've not experienced there leaving family behind I feel like we're better over here than being back in Peru. you know I love my country like I go to visit every now and then but I wouldn't go to live there precisely like if i have the opportunity to be here why not and everybody i know over there is trying to come over here so if i go back and i try to live there they're gonna be like what are you doing bro you got like you had to take it out like well, why are you coming back of course we have an amazing culture we have amazing food we have amazing places to visit which i cherish like i cherish my time over there because it it gave me like the the foundation of what it is like to be there and appreciate everything that is right here of course no country is perfect you know uh, like in the u.s we got shit little flaws bro but it's just in the overall thing you know like in the overall scheme of things it allows you for a lot of perspective yeah, yeah. and uh, I, I can't say that i have that same understanding mm -hmm. uh for like immigration purposes mm -hmm. but 
it makes sense, bro, that immigrants are always really happy to be in this country. Yeah. And 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 that allows me to understand and see like, okay, of course, of course, governments in general are always going to be imperfect. Of course. Because it's a human survival concept. Everything that we create yeah. is is always going to have room for improvement. Yeah. Um, so on one side, I don't think that this country is the best. Even by data, there's other countries around the world that have more freedom, more happiness, better wages, things like that. Of course. But imagine how much harder it is to get into those countries. A lot, bro. It's very difficult. Harder. Dude. Right? So, on the other hand, I've learned to be more appreciative mm -hmm. of the opportunities that I've had in this country mm -hmm. and, and to be happy, not for crumbs or anything, but to be happy to have had a better opportunity than my parents did Most definitely. in their country. Most definitely. And, and, and hey, if you're really about that, like fighting the power type thing, do something in this country where you can help people. Mm -hmm. If you have an opportunity to change something or to become something or to impact people or to change and transform people's lives, mm -hmm. do it, man, do yeah. it by whatever means necessary yeah you know and that's something that malcolm x said by and, any means and exactly and he had his own ideas and things of that nature mm -hmm. but we're not supposed to get stuck in the past like history is there to teach us the tools of the past so that we can um so that we can uh, uh um change them yeah to today mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying Most definitely. and 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 be able to take what was taught to us back then apply it to today and move forward and i think nipsey hustle was that was that individual yeah because you i i would say i would i would say that he was a conscious capitalist and, and a lot of people are going to be like oh well, capitalism this and that that's fair all of the all the criticisms of capitalism are on point they're correct yeah. but hey buds this is what we got yeah. all right and as far as i know the powers that be are very very well adjusted in yeah. this country and they're gonna maintain that for i th my estimate is hundreds of years like i don't see capitalism ending globally yeah. for yeah. hundreds of years it's funny like didn't they say that like there's this fact that the the leader of north korea he spends money buying a uh, i think hennessy bro he gets like a bunch of uh hennessy that's interesting I never yeah and it's like bro he hates capitalism, he hates the US, and then he's the biggest consumer of Hennessy, bro. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck, That's bro? crazy. Yeah. So, like, him and his little homies just party and shit? And he gets drunk on Hennessy, bro. So it's it's always ridiculous. Like, I have a cousin, you know, right there in Peru, who claims to be the communist communist. And then he's gonna go on vacation to Florida with his family, bro. And I'm like, bro. So you're coming bro. to America. And to then you enjoy. talk about all this stuff and you hate it. And you're talking about, oh yeah, this and that, capitalism. And he don't even go to eat a pizza hut in Peru because he's, you know, it's an American. Anti-corporations. Yeah, and then he goes to Florida. And he's been like the most privileged kid all his life. Always going to Florida every mm. now and then. Well, you know what? I, I don't want to dishonor all the, all the legit like leftists in history that have definitely done great things yeah. for, for society of course man. um but it's always funny that a lot of the most privileged people are always the people that are like leading the fight yeah you know and it's like you know i get it like you have to like you know uh che Guevara, like his family was fucking rich they have money bro so i guess it took him going through all the, you know, uh, stuff Education in South America, shit. seeing all the injustices that made him change. Mm -hmm. But then he left everything and he became a worker from the soil, bro. Mm. He didn't have no comfort in his life because he believed of being on the same level as the ground workers. Mm. But you can't believe in, in the left and still live in your nice, super bougie big life. house, bougie, doing this and that no like if you really want to be with the people be with the people lead the people mm -hmm. don't be a leader in your balcony staring down at the people throwing in money or just posting on twitter like you gotta be with the people sweat with the people bleed with the people mm -hmm. work with the people that's how you really do it that's the leader that people respect because people could be a leader no people get it messed up a, a, a boss will tell you what to do a leader will show you how to do it like a leader will be there with you and be like, hey, this is how you do it. Watch me. And then you do it. 
a boss will be in his desk like, oh yeah, you know, uh, go take care of that or go finish this paperwork by Tuesday or go do this and that, which they might have earned that position. But if you're talking about revolution and then changing ways, if you want to be a revolutionary leader, you got to be with the people there, boy, mm. like there, there, there. Absolutely. And so to add on to that, it's like, use that philosophy mm. but by utilizing cash flow to bring back resources to fucked up neighborhoods. Exactly. And that's why I said Nipsey Hussle was a modern day revolutionary, yeah, exactly. but he was using capitalism consciously. Exactly. And he did it the right way. Because he was smart, bro. He invested he, in his own. He studied. Yes. He studied history. He read, too. He, he studied... Uh, the revolutionary movements of Africa under uh, Nkrumah. Nkrumah is a socialist, mm -hmm. right? And so the idea is that, the, like their passion and heart to bring, because it's, I mean, socialism and communism in theory, they're always all about um, like an equitable life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, each according to their needs, Marx, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you can only do you can only create opportunities for people mm -hmm. if you bring resources to the people exactly but going back to like Che Guevara Che Guevara was there with the people yeah. Nipsey was in South Central with the people exactly bro and they you know they both ended in their path bro like Nipsey was doing good stuff bro he was opening in his businesses he would hire ex ex cons bro mm. parolees to give him a second chance in his own business in his restaurant so like you mentioned that's how you give the city a second chance that's how you make it happen like he was a social a socially conscious capitalist you know that he would reinvest his money into the hood bro because that's was his corner he started in that corner he died in that corner and he invested in that corner you know so that that's a self that's a prophecy bro it came 360. Mm. He started there and he ended there, but the energy that he he reciprocated in all that time is gonna live forever, bro. They call him that the millennial Tupac, bro. I agree. Yeah, hundred percent. Like the me impact, too. the impact was so moving, bro. It was, it was, cause it's like when Tupac died, man. I'm pretty sure we were too little to actually know exactly to what feel he the did. effect, right? But then when Nipsey died, we felt that how people felt when Tupac died, because mm -hmm. then we were able to see Nipsey rise, bro. Mm -hmm. See his movement, you know. I see his his interviews when he was like coming up, like with the messy uh, braids and the '60s hat, and he was just there, bro, like talking about the same thing he talks about in his final interviews, bro, mm -hmm. about owning property escrow real estate so he's been putting that message for over 10 years plus bro he was consistent he always had that message bro he knew exactly what his plan was the vision he had he fulfilled it and i'm pretty sure he probably had even more plans in motion but just everything he did and to the point that he was murdered was enough for the people to live with his legacy to honor his legacy to build around the energy that he has now everybody's talking about owning more owning your masters as an artist, uh, investing back in your community. An artist that reinvests in their community, that's hard to find. Bro. A lot of people would always be like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna wait until I make it big and they'll do this and that to reinvest in the community. Now, nah, we'll do it right now. Mm. What's stopping you from doing it right now? Give you a little bit of your time to you. Mm. Don't wait until you get rich, get big, and then you have money, because then you won't be giving your time, you just wanna give your money. Bro. Mm. And giving your money is not the same as giving your time. Bro. When you give your time and you're there with the people, you're there. People sometimes, sometimes people want to touch the cake, you know what I mean? And <laughs> see you there with them. You know what I mean? It's a good expression. Yeah, bro. Because if you are a superhero to these kids. Yeah, bro. So that's how they see, especially Nipsey. And he was there with some of the kids, bro. He was there constantly helping some of the kids, not just investing writing a check sending it but he was there with the kids bro yeah i wrote a lot of stuff man That's i wrote i wrote journal i i'm a huge fan Dude, of uh this is dope bro. of just the yeah. writing as much as possible yeah. highlighting as much as possible That's dope, dude. um but but you know at, before uh we took a quick little break yeah. we're coming back y'all um you were talking about like the impact right yeah of, of the brother nipsey and I, I think it's like you said, man. It's gonna, it's gonna live on for for, for a very, very, very long time. And 
maybe it was meant to be you know maybe that death was meant to be mm. to just propel everyone else yeah and and that is a true act and meaning of of leadership is allowing having the opportunity to mentor other people so that they become mm. the leaders of their own life when somebody dies bro that's that's a profit basically bro it's a when somebody's death propels the people into doing more it's what a prophet's life is like a prophet's life is like you know mm. you preach a message your whole life until you have a brutal end or and then that's how people start seeing your message analyzing what you said mm. and it propels people into something forward it's like a martyr too you know like it's like martyrs martyrs or prophets in human history have preached a message and they've had them be murdered or they have died in like a horrible way or not horrible way but like after they died their message kept the people going they took everything they said and just kept pushing with it you know that's how i see nipsey as you know he he uh he had a good message man he had a uh an amazing come up man nobody in the industry co-signed him dude he mm. did it on his own now not even dr dre in the west coast bro and dr dre's supposedly the one who reaches out and and brings new talent like how he brought kendrick mm -hmm. he didn't reach out to nick man he did it all on his own dude. Mm. he was the first rapper ever to sell a, a, a cd for a hundred bucks dude. the whole cd so much that jay-z admired that and he bought about a hundred copies so think about uh how much is that like if he bought a hundred copies and it each is a hundred bucks bro that's like 10 racks bro right you know what I mean? Right. So that's directly into his pocket because he wasn't signed to no label. So right. all the money went for him. And so that's why we decided to also write our book independently. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, bro, this guy was so powerful. Yeah, bro. And, and like the fact that you call him a prophet, I'm not too sure if I've heard that too often. Mm -hmm. But that story about what, what, what it allows to do is it allows people to learn more about you. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate yeah right, that we never really learn what we have until it's gone yeah that piece that part and unfortunately in music and arts people dwell more into your story when you're killed or, or after you die that's that's the sad truth they become your biggest fans after you die just check out Tupac's legacy bro. he's loved worldwide now when he was alive people followed him they liked his music but not as much as he is now hmm the only ones that would ha that have right now that pool worldwide would be Snoop Dogg and Jay Z. Mm. They are legends in their own, uh, in their own without having to die because they have put so much work and helped so much people. Mm. Speaking about Snoop, bro, Snoop is such a beautiful human being, bro. I love how he he's still in the neighborhood, bro. Yeah as a football coach yeah and he's dealt with so many politics in his neighborhood too bro mm. there were people that were always trying to discredit him saying hey snoop wasn't really from there he's not doing enough for his community and if he comes up on their neighborhood he has to not not that he has to but people would expect you to get back into your hood you know uh but like you mentioned he created a, a football league in long beach he has a football league now in pomona as well because his right hand partner is from Pomona. So then he always puts him on, you know, hey, mm -hmm. like there's kids over here as well who need guidance, who want to play football. So then Snoop Dogg opened up a football league in Pomona, right? So it's like he's already given back. And that's just the stuff that people know about. Who knows what else he has done for people without having to boast about it's it? Probably done way more, bro. For his neighborhood, for for probably OGs who were facing life or or who had a really big bond or had cases pending he probably paid for lawyer fees which when you're a rapper in your neighborhood they see you as a superstar or as the ticket for people to reach out to like if you need financial help and if they know you from this street or you or he knew an og coming up that might be in a case and he's able to pay his lawyer fees i'm pretty sure he would bro especially if it was something that that took care of him in the streets when he was really in the streets you know so that's those are the small politics of the neighborhoods man not that I know a lot, but I'm pretty sure that there would always be some politics involved, no? you know, especially if you claim to be from a set or a neighborhood. Now, if you're a regular person, then you don't fall underneath those 
those politics. Right. So same thing with Nipsey. You know, he was in his neighborhood. He was in in, in South Central. Uh, I'm pretty sure half of the people that are that were working in his restaurant, in his clothing line, brand, in his clothing shop, that came out of jail were people from his neighborhood. So that's how he also gives back to his community and to his hood. You know who else does something very similar? I'm sure you're very familiar with Homeboys Industries. Yeah, exactly. With with uh, Father yeah. Boyle. Yes. You know, I've read a little bit of his story in, I can't remember the name of the book, but something, Tears. Ugh, not too sure. Okay. But essentially, like, he talks about his purpose as as a father, a father in the community. By that, I mean, like, the, the, uh, the Christian version of a priest. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, you lead a church. Exactly. And he talked about how he's put so many people, he, um, he's led so many funerals. And, and, and we all know, we all know friends, I've had friends that have died by bullets from other fools that were just kids with guns. Yeah. But to go back into like the homeboy industry thing, bro, like this is, this is a real opportunity of redemption in life. Mm. Like our, 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 don't get me wrong. Are there some really fucked up shitty human beings that that probably deserve to be in jail? I think so. No, oh, yeah, bro. But in general, most definitely, dude. there there's not much uh, opportunity in the that system for your soul to be to have that second chance. Mm. But he gave that opportunity to people. Yeah. To people like Richard Cabral, who is probably one of the most <sighs> successful poets and actors in the Chicano American uh, Mexican American community hmm. this is a man bro that went to jail did his time for his crimes admitted to it everything gets out is clearly a be- a brilliant human being but without that opportunity of employment of a ex convict yeah you don't have a fucking chance he would have fallen right back into the same pattern being back in jail like a month later bro I'm exactly. pretty sure and and that's and that's the thing bro that's the thing about kind of going back to our discipline right mm-hmm. if we can't teach our children our little homies our friends discipline yeah. like how much can we expect of them i don't know if we can expect much because yeah because if we're not teaching them that if they don't see it then how are they gonna pick it up if they see us as leaders you know like if they see us as mentors like it has to come from us first we have to improve ourselves in various ways portray it put the energy out and then they'll start to pick up from it you know because if you you got to see it if you don't carry yourself as a leader or like at least do things for your own good kids want to listen to someone that they want to be like bro like they want to be like you know what he's doing this he's doing that he has a good message i'm going to start listening to him more now, if you're still in the hood drinking and smoking, they're not going to want to listen to you, bro. Because you're just like their drunk uncle, bro. Mm. Like the drunk homie on the block who fucking, uh, uh, fucking smokes rocks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what are some characteristics of leadership? For me, someone that carries themselves with the discipline necessary to overcome whatever is thrown at them. Mm. And that doesn't give up, bro. That doesn't give up. Of course, people would encounter setbacks. It's okay to crumble under pressure sometimes. Like, I've crumbled a thousand times under pressure. But it's just how you rebuild yourself from those down times. How you rebuild it, how you show your progress. Mm. It doesn't have to be financially. It could be spiritual-wise, physical-wise. But you got to portray something that people want to follow. That people want to listen to. If not, they won't. You know, I have uh, homeboys of mine that they want to become so successful, so famous of their music, so bad, bro, that they tell me, man, I got this, I got this, I got that, but people are not fucking with me. I tell them, well, what message are you putting out there, bro? What are you showing people? Is this something that they're going to like you as a person? They might like your music, but do they like you as a person? And that's how you know. If people like you as a person of what you do, how you carry yourself, Everything that you do, they will love your music. Because first you got to respect the person. You got to respect who's making that music for you to really be invested in the artist. It's like common, you know, 
I look up to Common a lot, bro. Like, I know what he does for his community. I know how many nonprofits he's helped out in Chicago, like what he's done in the city, to the point that now I'm reading his book. I loved his music before, but now after seeing, hearing the story, seeing what the man did, I'm like, damn, that's dope, bro. I don't mind buying the album. I, I don't mind buying the physical album, bro. Mm. And who does that? Like, who goes to Target nowadays in the <laughs> CD rack and picks up this freaking physical? You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody's just on iTunes, bro, downloading stuff. But it's about the appreciation. Yeah, bro. It's appreciation for the person, bro. And it's like, you got to give people substance, something they want to follow, bro. And it goes back into you guys' book. You guys drop mad science in there, bro. Mad substance, bro. To make someone like me who hated reading, bro, into wanting to read and not reading like a book a month, bro. Damn. That's energy, bro. That's, yes. that's something that you guys put out there, bro. And now, I mean, as you see on the IG, like I've been posting quotes of the books I read every now and then. To the point that now I see, uh, I see like some of the little homies that are posting quotes as well from the books they read, bro. Wow. That's the reciprocation of energy, bro. Yes, sir. That's dope, bro. I'm like, okay, like, it's coming together. Yes. And yeah. and on one side, I, I don't, I, I let's uh, suppose that, you know, we, we want to change society. Hmm. Um, there, there is a point to say that perhaps like these these energies both like positive the light energies and the negative dark energies perhaps they can they will always have to somehow coexist yeah however i don't let that slow me down mm. um it's like being aware of the bigger picture but saying like where am i gonna fit yeah am i gonna contribute to the negativity of the world mm -hmm. or am i gonna contribute to the light yeah. in the world and I've made a choice and my choice is to to be on on the side that I perceive mm -hmm. to be good ah! okay you know but it, it's also a very subjective thing mm -hmm. but I, what I can say is that there's a feeling that comes with this right a feeling that I get in my gut right and and I know when I'm surrounded by good humans who work hard yes. to make you smile. Mm. And then there's people who work hard to make you grin. True. And and I'm just like, I am gonna choose this one. <laughs> it just it, it, it's it's a no-brainer yeah. for me. Um <clears throat> and, and in and in general, bro, like I, I think it's it's very interesting that that we get an opportunity that we get an opportunity to be creative human beings mm -hmm. and, and 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 to and to continue to impact people of course if we have a gift why not put it out there bro like why not impact people with it mm. you know speaking about gifts that that, that that triggered a thought um some people don't like uh, uh louis farrakhan but I, I found a lot of wisdom mm -hmm. in in this elder because okay. he's an elder He's an elder that has been through a lot of shit. Mm. And he's clearly a leader because mm -hmm. he's leading the Nation of Islam, which is a group of some really, really strong yeah. humans. There is. They are, bro. Right? Yeah. And he said something about your gift. And he said, when, when a man or woman is envious, they block their own blessings. True. They block their mm. own opportunity to bring light to their gifts mm. because every human being was born with something yeah now is there a lot of factors that can come and fuck shit up absolutely of course that man. you have no control over yeah most definitely but for those of us that are aware of our gifts and we feel envious towards you or anybody else for your success for the things that are coming to your life mm -hmm. as soon as you start bringing that into your sphere of existence you immediately start blocking your own blessings yeah so it's really really important that i feel happy for your w for your w for your w and i've learned to do that bro my homie telling me about a job promotion that's what's up. possibly over earning 100k as a uh, as someone who grew up in poverty bro i want to hug you that's what's up bro. like congratulations that's what's up. Um, you know, the homie 
for being signed to Atlantic Records. That's what's up. Oh my God. Yes. Like. Yes, bro. I I can't even yes. share my my like my whole fullness mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. Because it might even seem weird. Like, what mm -hmm. the fuck? Like, why are you happy? You know. Right. Right. <laughs> but I'm happy because I'm happy about my life. You know, and I'm happy about whatever accomplishments that I've yes. accomplished, whether minimal or relatively big, but I'm happy. And to carry on your point about the envy, the blocks of blessings, the people who are the most envious, bro, are of course people that are not happy with the situation they're in at the moment. But instead of working inward, they project outward. Instead of self-analyzing them and being like, okay, what's like what am I doing in my life that keeps me stuck in this place like what am I not doing hmm. so instead of working on themselves to possibly achieve what you've achieved or what somebody else has achieved they choose to just envy and, and hate you know like and that that comes you know from being a hater and this and that because they all they see is what they don't have and what other people have but everybody has the same, the same 24 hours a day you have a job, I have a job. We make time after that to do what we love doing, to read a couple of pages, to just work on something that we love. And I try to give a lot of people a lot of advice or just share everything I know. If somebody tells me, oh man, like I seen you do this, I seen you do that. Everybody I come across, I let them know, hey man, I did this because I contacted this person or this, this and that and whatnot. So there's nothing hidden nowadays, especially, especially with social media, that, that everything's open. You could do whatever else somebody else is doing, but they still choose to envy. They block in their own blessings. They don't see, they don't see what they gotta do, you know? So you made a really big point, bro. Like when they envy people, they block their own blessings. They block whatever could come their way. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, I've never been a person that sits down and just be like, oh, be like, oh, why does this person have this or 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 this that? You know what I mean? Because I know I got my own, my own cap capabilities. You know, it's stuff I can accomplish. If I was in a situation where I wasn't completely happy with myself, and let's be honest, like I, I know I could be doing much more in certain aspects. Mm -hmm. But I know physically I can only do so much and, and <laughs> mentally as well. So I recently learned to value the small things I do or like the small wins, like celebrate small wins. A small win could be waking up early, like doing a quick workout, reading a couple of pages or reading three pages before work. You got to stack those wins, you know, and then at the end of the day, you feel much better. Like, okay, like I did these things today to better me mentally, to better me physically that possibly in the future will get me somewhere else. But if you stay stuck in the same cycle, smoking constantly, drinking constantly, calling off work because you're too, too hungover, wasting days because you're hungover, you're not gonna get anywhere with the same old habits, bro. That's just what it is. People won't evolve with the same old habits, man. That's a perfect point, bro. Like yeah. this idea of like self evolution yeah. or inner, inner, like the um, J. Cole says, the real revolution is inside of you. Yeah, bro. And, and, and I connect with that 100%. Yeah, because I see everything that's going on, I'm just like, it's a lot of motherfucking bullshit. It's a lot, bro. Bullshit is everywhere, bro. So instead of trying to entertain everything outside of me, which I'm very curious about a lot of things, anyways, but like when I really want to work, on things, mm -hmm. I work on me. Good. Because there's gonna be a, a immediate reflection of me mm -hmm. outwardly. Right. The way that I see life, the way that I interact with people. Exactly. And that's where the impact happens. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, getting back into like the blocking of blessings, I just recently was taught about the idea of being willing to embrace and accept with everything you got, all the abundance there is to accept. Mm. What does that mean? What does it look like? It looks like if you were willing to give me something, it means receiving that with all of my heart. Mm. It doesn't matter whether it's a hundred dollars or a one dollar um, paletita or something. Mm. 
But there's this thing where we can block our own blessings by not receiving with an open heart everything that's given to us. So what I'm trying to disseminate is tapping into an abundance, Mm -hmm. a force field of abundance where you'll never be short on happiness necessarily. Um, You'll never be short on money. Mm -hmm. You'll never be short on love. You'll never be short on, on these on these very tangible and intangible things that's right that like elevate us mm. like that's what life is for me where i feel like i'm in a situation where i'm like i'm, I'm elevated bro mm. like i and, and and it doesn't mean that i'm like trying to shit on people like, oh you're you you know, low, you're, you know. no 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 it's it's about like like me just walking my path mm. But feeling like literally this path is like somewhere else. Right. And I think it's kind of that same idea of like crafting your own path hmm. and, and, and lighting up the fire for the foods that are going to come behind me. You know, like you were talking about earlier about being a mentor of music to some of these younger mm-hmm. uh, foods yeah. that didn't, that you didn't, you didn't have this information coming up. No. But you have it now. now. Yeah. And you're sharing it, right? So all these people are picking up dimes, left, left, and right, and and then before you know it, it took you ten years, let's just say, to get to a certain point. Maybe it could take them three years, right? Maybe two years, yeah. maybe five years. That's what they get, and that's when you really, you know, propel them, and you taught them more. So, in making them not not take as long as what took you to learn something, that's what the difference is, you know. Because you told you, you told them everything that you know, and they were able to learn it faster and not take as long as it took me to learn it or you to learn it. So that's where where, where the whole mentorship thing comes in, you know, in full circle. Like because you're telling them, not telling them what to do, but you're guiding them. You know what I mean? Right. So then, yeah, that's when you actually see that it's like okay, like that's that's where the difference is being made in. Do you feel like your music has purpose? Yeah, yeah. If not, I wouldn't pick up the pen. What do you What do you think is the purpose of your artistic expression, your music? To paint you a picture, to be self aware, you know, of, of what I'm trying to tell you at the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like every time I open up the Pro Tools, right? It, that's the recording software. You know, it's just like boom. I see it as an empty canvas, bro. And I could paint with sounds, with voice and, and, and this and that. So you have to respect yourself as an artist and your craft so much that you're not gonna sell yourself short, take shortcuts. If you wanna uh, send a message through a song, through a verse, you have to make sure you pick the right words, the right tone when you record it for people to capture that emotion you had at the moment, and it's, uh, and let's say I want to write about something that happened to me in the past, like let's say a breakup or whatever. We've worked to not feel those things anymore, right? To not think about that loss of that breakup with that person, right? Because those things were painful. So we worked, we spent time uh, focusing on ourselves, you know, to not regress, to progress, to be comfortable being being us now by our our ourselves and everything so then if you want to capture that feeling and that emotion if you're going to talk about that breakup you have to go to a place in your mind that you taught yourself not to go to anymore Mm. so then you have to feel a little bit i mean that's what happens to artists that really respect the craft and really want to reciprocate that emotion they had at the moment so in my case I would have to go to that certain place in my mind, that sadness, how that felt, in order to be able to write about that. That's how it comes across authentic. Because if not, I would just be looking from afar and trying to, you know, and have a filter on it. It's not the same way. Like, I have to put myself in that mind state, Mm -hmm. in that state of mind, of that sadness, of that yucky feeling, ride with that. And to the point that sometimes it might not be the healthiest thing, but then it comes to with the art. I might be like into my feelings for like the rest of the day because it's hard to detach from that once you tap back into that. But then 
when you record a track and you send it through and people hear it, you're like, damn, I really captivated that. And people tell you, damn, man, I really felt that, bro. You really captured that emotion. You really made me feel what you were feeling, dude. And that's because you go back to that memory. You go back to those times. You go back to that in your head to know how that felt and how you could translate it. Mm. Maybe at the moment when you were feeling that, you didn't know why you were feeling those things. But with the music, with the art, when you're writing about something and you think about all those memories, all those painful things you went through and you're putting it into words, like into books for people to open, read it, read it and get the energy. That's how you know you, you were meant to go through that for people to not uh, consume it in a healthy way and know that they're not the only ones that went through that. Mm. So it's a little, it's a big process. It's a little bit like if I'm writing something and I put it out there, I'm trying to captivate you with it, I'm trying to make you feel what I was feeling for you to resonate with it. If you're going through it, of course. If not, you can just appreciate the good art, you know, or just the music. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of sounds so cliche at times because everybody says the same thing, but few capture it, few do it. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, man, I, I do masterpieces. Like, I do this and that. Like, but then you hear it and you're like, bro, come on, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, like, it kind of <laughs> becomes a cliche. But, I mean, it's all in the work. And that's it. Like, it's all in the music at the end of the day. And, and I think that's the most powerful form of, of art. Yeah. Is the one that transports you yes. to a place where maybe you've never even been to. Mm -hmm. So there is such recollection of, of power and emotion in certain art pieces that you learn mm -hmm. without even having had that experience. Exactly. And that's the power of wisdom in literature and movies and, and, and songs, etc. That it has the potential, again, to share something to mm. teach something and of course sometimes we do relive these wounds from a distant past yeah but i figured if they reopen there's a reason why they're reopening mm -hmm. there's a reason why you're still bleeding mm. there's a reason why true there's a thing that still yeah. crawls deeply within you reason why you know go to therapy once a week you know what i mean it's just like <laughs> trying to close those wounds bro like you know and i guess it's the connection the soup that the little rope i still have to those memories that allows me to create so profound you know because mm -hmm. i haven't completely closed that door yeah so it allows me to borrow from these experiences into making music into making something that people value that people like and it goes a little bit with the saying that uh a lot of artists suffer you know, like a lot of artists have to suffer in order to create good art, which in, at a certain extent, it's a little bit true, but you don't have to get stuck in the suffering. And it goes back into the same thing I told you in the beginning, that like we have to relish the wins and savor the good moments and not always think on the what next. Because if, if, if you don't cherish the small wins, then you'll never, you'll never savor the fruits of your labor as an artist, as a creator. Facts. Yeah. You know, one, one of my homegirls said, Pain is normal, but suffering is not. Mm. And I, the difference is simply that I could experience the pain of a moment, but for me to continue to rehash that mm. over and over and over, now that's choosing to suffer. Yeah. And I was like, oh, damn. Like, you just dropped a, yeah. a knowledge bomb Word. on me. Because, Word. I mean, I've had therapy as well. Yeah. And I suffer my own level of anxieties. Hmm. And the other day, bro, it had been a minute since I had, like, some type of, like, anxious moment. Hmm. And what it was, I was, like, driving on the freeway. And I kept thinking about this shit. Some stupid ass shit. That was, that was not based in reality. Hmm. It was based on a couple things, but I kept, make, I kept assuming. Yeah. And making all these, like, internal dialogues that did not exist whatsoever. And I was like, bro, I thought you were mentally strong. That's yeah, that's annoying, right? Bro. But then it just kept going, and it was like a like a broken uh, CD that yes. just kept going and going and going. Yes, the bro. only thing that fucking saved me was my support system, bro. Okay. I was I was going on my way to uh, practice football with my buddies. Nice. 
And when I got there, I was still anxious. I still thought about it, but I, I eventually just snapped out of it because I was using my body in, in football ways, which sports, it makes sense why when I was a kid, I never really experienced anxiety because I was always playing, bro. If I was not playing in the streets, I was playing at school. If I wasn't playing at school, mm -hmm. I was at home going to sleep. My whole life was play. Like, ch I'm not saying I never struggled, but my imagination always came through. Mm -hmm. And I played, and I played, and I played. So today as an adult, right. my philosophy is I'm going to find a way to play, to get paid by playing. Like, when, nice. I, go to, when I go to work, nice. I'm playing. Okay. And, That's and, dope. and it's a privilege. Don't get me wrong. It's a privilege. But I have that privilege, and I share that with people, and I say, bro, figure out a way. And Alan Watts taught me this, by the way. So he's like, find a way to get paid by playing. That's dope, bro. That's dope. And, and that's it's a cool way to see it. It's a beautiful way yeah, to see man. it. Because in that way, you lower your own opportunity to feel anxious. Mm -hmm. Because again, anxious comes from like wor worries, anxiety, yes. Uh, whatever, right? Anxiety is an overload of energy, bro. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense that you told me that you played a lot of sports because you have a lot of it in you. But you know what helped you at that moment? Breaking into flow state, bro. Mm -hmm. Going into moving your body, mm -hmm. playing. So. Whenever you feel anxious, bro, like the best thing I could tell you, it's work your body out, bro. Because in the middle of you, let's say running to like mile and a half, bro, in the mile and a half mark, I guarantee you won't be thinking about, man, I'm so anxious right now. No, your, your body's gonna be sweating, bro. And you might even feel better afterwards, like, damn, man, I did that workout, you know? Fuck yeah, like my mind was fighting against me, I controlled it, I ran two miles and a half, three miles, I feel good now. Those endorphins kicked in, you feel good after that, right. you know what I mean? Because it's like, nobody is going to feel anxiety while they're playing a sport, bro. I guarantee you not, bro. Right. Yeah, you might feel nervous, like if you're playing at a super high level or before the game, you might feel it, right. but no athlete is going to feel anxiety in in the flow of things, ten in minutes, the game. Ten minutes into the game, they're on it. Yeah, like they're good. You're too busy. Yeah, bro. You're too busy. Just yeah. Do that. I love that. I love that idea. The flow state is the expectation that will give you anxiety. Like, mm. And then I get anxiety whenever I'm like in a like in a close place. You know, I mean, if I'm not in control of things, like that gives me anxiety. But I train myself to to not feel it. You know, I I do small things throughout the day to let me know I'm in control. And that goes into the smallest details to not give into my brain's desires, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I might not do something in the morning that might let my mind win over myself to let me know I'm in control of things. Like, maybe even slowing down on my drinking, bro. Like, I used to drink a lot, and I just, like, you know, like, I might have a drink every other week or so, but not as much as before. Like, working out more constantly taking care of my body more. Yeah, you know, I still got a lot of, you know, work to do, you know, as far as keeping working out and whatnot. But just the fact that I woke up in the morning, early, pushed my body to its limits, that's enough of a win for me. Maybe not being like the super fit dude, but no, I knew I, I, I know I woke up that day. That what morning. about having a super fit mind? How about that? That too. But, of course. Like, dude, that's why, that's another reason why I work out. Yeah. It, it's not just discipline to kind of have like a routine mm -hmm. to do shit that makes me uncomfortable, but for mental health reasons, bro. God, dude, that's so good, bro. I just feel yeah. happy, dude. Like, yeah. when I get out of jujitsu, bro, I have some of the most profound, revelatory moments as I'm driving home. The other day, the other day, because I, I work out with my jujitsu in Southgate, so I get on okay. the 105. Um, and I get off on Lombies to come to my neighborhood mm -hmm. and it was perfect bro. The sun uh, was melting away as um, That's the energy bro. You see <laughs> right? It? As, yeah. as, as, as uh, one of my favorite songs was playing which was uh, Fade Into You by Maisie Star. Oh, I think I heard it. Oh dude, it. it's one of those profound very deeply emotional 90s rock alternative 90s. vibes. Okay. So all of this is going on bro and I'm just like Staring at the sun and I'm just like, fuck. I'm in the right place right now. Dude. I'm, I'm alive. Oh shit, there you, you know, go. like I'm so happy there you go. to do this. Oh, and yeah. working out really helps that. Hmm. Like getting to a point where you you physically pushed yourself like you have never done so before. Yes. Um, 
I recommend for some people that don't like lifting, that don't like jogging, try jujitsu. Go out there, get your ass whooped. Dude, I get my ass whooped every time. So I get humbled every every time I'm there. Mm-hmm. Like my ego, if I I already know not to walk in there with an ego, first of all. Because you're gonna get slammed, bro. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna get slammed. But in though. general, but in general, there's moments and times like I was talking about earlier, mm-hmm. like I possess an ego and I'm there and here. And so that trains my ego mm-hmm. to know, like, oh you really ain't shit, bro. You thought you knew, blah, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly, yeah. bro. So I'm just I'm lucky, dog. I'm lucky to be able to 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 I feel really young sometimes. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not anymore. Like like for example, a 17, 16 year old, like that's really, really young. Um in a in a in a in a naive sense mm-hmm. where like the world still hasn't necessarily really like choked you that much yet depending on your lifestyle of course i think after 25 a lot of people start experiencing some more of that adult pressure to of course to do this yeah. and to do that yeah and I, I think that's when life starts getting really asphyxiating so uh, I want all young people to start working on all these tools that we're talking about. Of course, man. Just do it, bro. Of course. Just try it out. Who cares if you think it's bullshit? Yeah. Try it first. And then decide whether it's bullshit or not. So that when you are our age or even before that age, you you can thrive, bro. I want people to thrive. They'll be in a much better situation than we both are, man. If they have everything, if they start at this moment, man, creatively, like... I, Academically too, bro. Academics are important too, bro. It is a lot, bro. You were the one who uh, wrote about wrote, writing the uh, the essay on uh, skateboarding. No, that's the homie. That's your homie, huh? Yes, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. And yeah. and that was within an academic setting. Yeah, he wrote that in that set. So and they downplay him like, what? Like, what's this? You know, like mm, that, I was like, isn't that Damn, so heartbreaking? That's messed up, bro. Because he's a he's a he's a he's he's Essien is one of my favorite intellectuals. Yeah, he's 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 more um, book intelligent, okay, academic intelligent than I am. Mm-hmm. So his his round his writing within that realm will be very professor esque. I was like, Damn, which I also shows the diversity of his own mind, right? To be yeah. able to write something like this versus something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's important, bro. We need people in that field as well. To say, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna talk about skateboarding, homie. Yeah, bro. Because skating is real, bro. Skating fools are some of the realest motherfuckers you're ever gonna meet in life. And skateboarding was always on the hood. It was just, it's not as portrayed as much as it should be. Mm. But it, keep, like, it keeps a lot of people focused as well, bro. There's a lot of people that skateboard in the hood, bro. But it was never portrayed. I think the first song I heard about skateboarding was by Lupe Fiasco, bro. Kick Push. Oh, where he talked about going up song. in the hood and then skateboarding, you know, yeah. kick, push, copes, you know, like, yes. and I was like, oh shit, and then when he shot the video, it was in his neighborhood, it showed kids who were like skateboarding in the hood, and that's why, and after that I was like, okay, people are really skateboarding now, more now, you know, even me growing up, like, I used to skateboard a lot, and I felt like kind of shy to bring her around my homies, you know, to, to like bring my skateboarding around my homies, because my homies were into some other shit. And they'll see it as being lame, you know, mm. oh, you're skateboarding, like, you probably think you're white and this and that. Mm. So, and I would listen to a lot of rock, bro. And I still do now, but back then, like, they kind of weren't too welcome to that. What, what, what were you listening to? The Vines, the Vines, uh, Puddle of Mud, Nirvana, a lot of that, uh, some of that punkish slash, slash 90s grunge. Damn, that's the best shit right yeah, there. so I would listen to a lot of that, man, and... Uh, then one of my homeboys introduced me to hip hop and I heard Big L and I was like, oh, like it was all from there, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From there on, I was like, damn, what is this? How can I get more of this? Mm. And I dwelled into the hip hop culture, bro. That's awesome. That leads me perfectly into my next question, which is like, what, what got you started, dude? Oh man, like hip hop was always around without me even acknowledging it, bro. Like, I remember one of the, one of my older cousins, he had music magazines, right? And I would just browse them because uh, like a lot of my family in Peru is into music. Like, not in the music business, but they have bands. Like I have two cousins in rock bands. Is that all rock? Yeah, okay. rock bands. Uh, one of them, he makes a lot of indie rock as well. 
So I always grew up around music. I just wasn't. Bro, I love I love it. Spanish indie rock. It's, it's uh, I mean, it, just in general, like Spanish music is, is one of my, my loves because it, it gives me a whole different angle yeah. to music. Yeah. Like, dude, dude, I get access to half of the planet's music. I'll send you some of my cousin's link later, bro. Please it's all do. Spanish indie, bro. It's please cool, do. It's cool. Please do. And it's like, so music, hip hop was always around, bro. Like, I just wasn't acknowledging it. You know, like, one of my cousins bought the Will Smith album back in the day. And without me knowing it, I was listening to not the best hip hop because it was Will Smith, not to downplay Will Smith, but it was like, you know, his hip hop wasn't as, as the real hip hop quote unquote, you know, sure. like, like artists. Although party. that, that, that Bel Air song went hard. Yeah, I mean, it was just kind of like party music, party hip hop, like, but it was there, you know, like the, the, the beats and the melody, then Limp Bizkit came through. Mm. And they had that rock infused hip hop sound. That's gangster. Yeah, and there's a song that Limp Bizkit did with Method Man back then. Wow. It was called uh, End Together Now. It's dope. It was a beat by DJ Premier. Um, and I didn't know who Method Man was back then. But I was just like, okay, this is dope. And those things kind of sparked the curiosity of what hip hop is. Until I was, you know, until I came over here, I've migrated over here to the US and one of the older cats at my school, he always had an oversized hoodie, two big old headphones, baggy jeans with the case Swisses, bro. And he was Jeez. always walking around like, you know, bobbing his head and, and, and he's like He was hip hop out. One time he sat next to me in class and he had he was like the whole thing, like he had his notebook. And he would just like tag in his book, bro. Scribble his name and to tag in, and he was always tagging and this and that. He was never in class, but he was tagging, you know. So, <laughs> so I was just like, damn. Like, he sat next to me one time, and he's like, "Yo, you gotta listen to this instead of that music that you're always listening to." And I felt the tag. I was like, "What?" Like, he's like, "Watch." So, so then he gave me a mix CD he had back when CD players were popping, you know, and and we carried our CD player, and. uh He's like, here, man, take this home, listen to it on your way home. And then I, that's when I played the CD. I heard songs like Big L, a lot of the LA underground rap scene. They got, they had the, the LA symphony on it. Some cats, some cat named Pigeon John, bro. Like a lot of underground, underground LA, bro. Um, and I was like, damn, this is dope, bro. And I started dwelling more in it. And then that's when we had the internet. Well, we had the the, the 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 softwares that downloaded songs right like line wire and this and that so i would always go and download a lot of stuff i'll search on the internet all the rappers catalog i was so interested bro and i would just hear more stuff and more stuff and then I, I made my own mix cds and then one thing led to another like discovering this rapper led to another and this then i discovered most deaf after most deaf talib quali and then i started now i noticed what black star was it was both of them together and then because I heard Black Star, I heard the song Respiration with Common in it. I gravitated to who Common was. And then I love this music, bro. I was like, damn, this, this, like, this is fresh as fuck. I started, I started downloading more of his music until I had a collection of CDs myself, bro. And I became so, somewhat of what that dude was. Like I would walk with my headphones all the time, with my hoodie, bro. Like I was like, damn, like... I learned a bit more about the hip hop hip hop culture. There were dudes in school who who will have freestyle battles and they'll be in a cipher. And I I never knew what a cipher was until I saw one, which is everybody in a circle, everybody hyping each other up, one going after another, just rapping, freestyling. I was like, this is dope. I like the closeness they had, mm. the energy they had. That was so new to me, bro. I was like, this is fresh, dude. What does one have to do to be praised this way? Mm. And that's when it came. You got to be nice with it in order for people to praise you like that. If you're not nice, you're, you're going to get clowned on. Yeah, bro. And that's the realness of it. I was like, shit, like this is dope. It's either you make it or break it. If you're not coming with it, go back to the drawing board, rewrite. Mm. Then I met some other cats who were actually writing and recording. You know, um, one of my homeboys, bro. Like, well, he was my homie's older brother, man. He was in the streets a lot bro but he would always write and to me he was the illest cat dude he had the freshest rhymes he could freestyle on the spot him and his homies made demo tapes and this cat was my age but he was so advanced in life i didn't notice it then but he was 
in a path of self-destruction because everything he was doing mm. but he was so gifted if he would have met somebody like myself now that would have guided him the right way who would have gone to jail and and he would have been the, the the dopest still you know but i was like you know at that point i was like damn so then i saw how he wrote i saw his bullet points in this page and how he would write rhymes and i tried to emulate that and that's how i got into writing you know and i would wake up one whole summer break, I was making my point to write a rap a day, bro. I wasn't going out, I wasn't the most social, I was just in my house, just burning beats of line wire mm. with my little headphones on, bro, and just writing. Even if it was completely whack, like, my dad's laptop had a, uh, a small recording software. For some reason, I learned how to use it. He had a little USB mic that he would do conference calls with, and I would just record into that thing, bro. And I would then save the MP3 and send it to my cousins in Peru. They'd be like, damn, dude, like, that's fire. Then one of my homeboys, he had a little crack DJ program in his computer. So he's like, just send me, send me your voice of you rapping to the beat on your headphones and I'll mix it, right? My homie Percy, man, like, so then he, I would send him that file, that MP3. He would open it in his computer and then mix it and then show it to everybody in school on the next day, bro. That was the first time I learned how to collab online, bro. That was fresh, dude. Yeah. And it wasn't the best mix, but it's like he loved to put things together, you know. That was his passion, DJ, and he passed he passed away like about four years ago, bro. So mm. but he always had a passion for music. So that's how we I did like the first mixes with that. And I like people's reactions, bro. And you know, I've never got a really whack reaction. I got a couple of harsh truths, you know, of course, like, hey, man, you got to improve in this, you got to improve in that, which is constructive criticism. It's normal. Yeah, bro, and it's constructive In fact, I prefer it. Exactly. I feel like even at this level, I still need to improve in some ways. Mm. You know, like, it's, we never stop learning. It's like if you practice martial arts, you got to make time to practice, to rehearse. You got to treat your craft with seriousness. Same thing with rapping. As an MC, you got to... Uh, make sure you keep that sword sharp you gotta take take care of yourself physically mentally in order to be able to write some dope shit because if you're if you're not then your mind's not gonna work right in order for you to write dope, dope shit that's how i see it that, that that's how it works for me so that's the method i try to teach these young cats like it all comes from your mind and your body and your spirit like if you don't take care of them your creativity won't flow the right way you could make self-destructive stuff as you're self-destructing yourself mm. or you can make uplifting things things that are going to resonate with the people when you're uplifting yourself on your own i encourage a lot of reading reading open up your vocabulary and what's an mc somebody that takes words and puts them together in a rhyme pattern if you've never read you're going to get stuck in the same words all the time with reading it becomes much more easy so that's how you treat the craft right so i try to learn all the time i keep learning I see young MCs who are so dope. I try to learn from them too, like, you know, because they come in with fresh energy, some fresh ideas mm. that I might think, man, this might not work. But they're like, nah, it's gonna work, bro. Because I might not see their vision, but but they have a different vision. And who am I to just neglect it and shut it down? You you can't exactly. Or you shouldn't. Yeah, we can actually, but, but we, we should shouldn't. not. We shouldn't, because then who knows? This kid's bright idea might be a next wave or something so so who am i to tell them hey that's not gonna sound right right because it's a fresh idea it's a it's a brand new person who has a lot of things to give and if they get shut down so early by somebody who supposedly has been doing this for a long time it might let them to not express their ideas when in a studio session in the mm -hmm. future because they might be like now nah, my ideas are not good enough of the first interaction that they have with you yeah you know, there's people like that. You know, earlier you said something really important about like what got you started on yeah. that path. And you said that like praise, like you wanted to feel loved, yes. appreciated yes. and understood right within a certain tribe. In a therapeutic sense of way. Yes, absolutely. Because I had lost my tribe by migrating somewhere right. where I felt alone. Right. So I was finding my home away from home. Mm. So that's what it did. Yes. That's what hip hop did. It gave me a home away from my home. Wow. It's, it, it, it gave, it showed, it basically showed the love 
that I have left away. Not that my parents did not show me love or this and that, but it gave me an attention that they didn't give me because they were always working. Mm -hmm. So it gave me attention, it gave me love, it gave me acceptance, it gave me recognition. Things that supposedly family should give you that not all families do. Let's just be honest. Like they might not have an opportunity to exactly. do Exactly. So. so then when, when you get that from somebody else, it's appealing. And that's the same thing that gangs do in some way, in a more toxic way, of course. They, they teach kids. They to give find kids a home. acceptance. Exactly. A home that they don't have at home. Right. But thankfully, I fell in the hands, I fell in the hands of hip-hop mm. and not in the gangs, man. That's what's up. If not, knowing myself and the dedication I have and stuff I like, man, I would have been like probably doing life now, bro. If I would have been a game angry, bro. Because mm. I would have been so in it, so dwelled in it, so dwelled in it. Right. Because it, it seems like you did have that, that you were just waiting for that exactly, thing bro. that was going to call you home. Yeah. So you could kind of pour yourself into it. Exactly. And clearly, like, you have passion, talent, and... If, if all of this falls into the wrong hands, we will get exploited for it. Yes. And unfortunately, there are organizations out there whose purpose is not necessary to exploit you, but given the opportunity to get something out of you, to do something for their own selves, they will take that. Yeah. They will take that, especially we give it to them. And you know who, was, who, was, uh, who I heard talking about this? Um, it's an old video. Are you familiar with George Carlin, the comedian? No. Ooh. George Carlin is a... Uh, he was profound mm. and genius man. In, in his work as a comedian. I strongly suggest okay. if you ever want, if, like if you and your girl are into like comedy and you guys want to do like a yeah, sl slap it on YouTube and you guys are going to laugh fucking a lot. Man. So he was being interviewed by then a young John Stewart. Okay. And, and it was a really beautiful conversation. But through this, he asked him like, how'd you get started with like comedy? Mm. And he basically said, at a very early age, I was given praise for being funny. There you go. Sometimes that's all you need, man. You found something. Yeah. And everyone like listening and tuning in that, okay, I know not everybody. It's a little unfair for me to place it like that because whatever, maybe some, some people have never experienced that. Mm -hmm. and my suggestion to them is keep experimenting, yeah. keep shooting your shot, keep swinging that bat, oh, yeah. and, and, and who knows, maybe you will find that little thing, that mm -hmm. niche in society where you feel that praise. Exactly. Mine was sports. Well, that's how I knew that I was good at something. There you go. Because it, you get that, you get that support that every human is by nature just craving at a deep soul level mm. where you desire to be loved mm -hmm. uh, the Smiths say I am human and I need to be loved mm -hmm. just like everybody else does right yes and I'm yes. just like me <laughs> you know like I, I just yeah. want to I just want to be yeah. loved at the end of the day yeah, man. so it, it, it was good you know I, I'm a big fan of, of podcasts and interviews for that reason because Man, you, in what world do you get to live where you get to listen to your favorite people just chop it up? You know, and who knows, maybe like when I release this podcast, there's a supporter of yours. Like one, like one real supporter that's like, she's about to be dope. Yeah. And as soon as it gets yeah. released, they're going to be like, I'm, I'm going to tap in. Yeah. And they're like listening, bro. Yeah. Like legit listening to everything that yeah. you say. Just like I was listening to everything George was saying, mm -hmm. to everything Stuart was saying, um, and and now today with podcasters that 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 I that resonate with me is like Joe, like Lex Friedman, like they're just they have these guests, bro, that are geniuses. I have to amp my podcast game, bro. You know, I have to listen to more podcasts, dude. To be honest, like I really do. You know when they're good, like when you go running. Don't get me wrong. I love working out with music, and some like sometimes I want to cut shit off. I don't want to learn. Like sometimes I don't. Yeah. I'm not interested. Like I, I like I feel like I've burned out a certain fuse, mm -hmm. and I like today I'm working out with music. Yeah. And I'm fucking pushing it through it like this. But other days I put on a podcast, bro. Now I'm working out my mind and my body. Perfect. Fool, I come out feeling like a G, dude. <laughs> I feel like right now I'm more into reading, mm. so. I might read a little bit before I work out and after I work out. Yeah. 
So I try to take it step by step. Like, I mean, once I get a little bit of noise reading, I might go into the podcast and then I might do that. Like I might run, let the uh, well, bump in the podcast. Cause now every time I work out, bro, I'm blasting something like some freaking Beanie Siegel, like some old school Jay-Z, like something to get me over that last mile or get me over that last set of push-ups, you know, like mm. something that will propel me more like, like freaking Annie Up Remix by uh, M.O.P. Classic track, bro. Fire, dude. That track will freaking get you out there, bro. Running, like it gets you into wanting to do some of this stuff too like if you're not careful but it's a really really like it's a bomb bro it's a dope track so but i have to get more into podcasts bro like my girl she listens to a lot of podcasts uh she always does it i'm more into videos online that might be about eight minutes eight minutes long ten minutes long that drop jewels on you because it's very it's, um, it, it's straight into the point time saving yeah. exactly so i mean i could be driving from work or uh, from home to work and I could just bump that and it'll get me amped up into handling my day. Mm. You know what I mean? So Very like, motivational, exactly. right? Exactly. Like, you know, like uh, there's this businessman that started Rockefeller Records named Dane Dash, right? <sighs> that dude talks a lot about ownership. He's harsh with That's it. That's a though. business, He's man. He's harsh with it, bro. So I follow him and the other partner, Bix Burke. Mm-hmm. Bix Burke always drops quotes on IG that people reshare a lot without not knowing who Bix, Bix Burke is, bro. But mm-hmm. Bix Burke was the co-founder of Rockefeller Records too. Like if you look at Jay-Z's first album in the back cover, you see three dudes. There's Jay-Z, Dame Dash, and Biggs Burke. They were the ones that put the cash from the streets to found Rockefeller Records with Jay. That's so dope, now bro. Biggs, Biggs, he has a hashtag called Redo96. Cause 96 was the year where they started Rockefeller Records. And I think he owes parts of Rockefeller stock as well. Like they have, I think one of them, no, they sold Rockaware, but they they own a little bit of the rights of the sales of the uh, Rockefeller album still. So so they get some uh, checks every now and then. Now, Dane Dash, he doesn't want nothing to do with Rockefeller Records anymore. So then he, he, he talks about making your own business, like starting your own stuff, like not falling for old tactics, like uh, chase your own vision, own your own stuff. He has an interview in The Breakfast Club where he punks everybody in there. He just tells everybody, he tells them about ownership, how, of course, he goes into the extremes about how it's bad to have a boss, like you have to be your own boss in your life, which yeah, in some way, because yeah. he was like, like a man, you can't be a man you unless you are boss. your own boss. Yeah, bro. So and, that was, and of course, that's, that is an extreme. Yeah. But uh, the hyperbole, is, the hyperbole is used correctly. Right. You got to read to it. Push your read. ass. Exactly. To be like, oh, I see what you're trying. Exactly. To do. So it's at the end of the day, it's ownership. If you if you're the owner of your own stuff, if you put up your own money to make your own movies, your own stuff, your own product, then you made that, bro. It's powerful. You dude. made that. You it's powerful. I mean? Yeah, like it's about freedom. It's about independence. Because yeah. then you don't have to beg nobody for money, like, oh, bro. I'll read them as well, bro. Cause, Cause that Rizzo book, I read the whole thing. That Rizzo book is dope, bro. That the Did Rizzo that book move? is is one of the the top was one of the most profound ones. Bro, um, man, it's dope, dude. You you really get to see. I think that's one of the most inspiring books for me, in in a sense, because it's very street oriented. So you know where the you know where the intent is at, mm-hmm. and like I I know homies that don't read, mm-hmm. never read. But read that book, yeah. And they're like, "Yo, this is the only book I've ever read, bro." And I'm like, "There's why? Because it's 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 it was for us. It's so spiritual too, bro. Oh, his the, where he starts talking about abortion, it got real spiritual. Yeah, because he didn't make it political. He basically said, like, he said that he doesn't support the act of abortion, but he said that he didn't support it." Because he believes that as soon as the sperm touches the the uh, the egg, mm-hmm. that that is like uh, basically um, a, 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 a godly moment, yeah. Where life has begun in a sense where it, it's kind of created this uh, chain reaction of light, where it's just like psh, now you're connected to the all, yeah. Um, and I respected that, obviously, like. You know, I, I'm a modern person, you know, and 
by my modern standards, I think the the logic flows in supporting like um, like the freedom of doing what you need to do with your body. Right. right. But from a spiritual standpoint, it made a lot of sense. Yeah. That life kind of begins at inception or whatever. Right, and just just to kind of tack, mm-hmm. touch on that spirituality. Yeah. When he made the comparison with how chess is life, mm-hmm. he dropped a lot of numbers on it. Something about when the sperm hits the egg, it creates a, a, a osmosis, right? Mm-hmm. And how every single cell breaks down into a single quantity. That I forget the numbers, but it all comes back to being sixty-four, mm-hmm. right? The number is sixty-four. Which at the same time, so 64 is a number to create life. And at the same time, there's 64 squares in the chess mm. board. So it's like when people say chess is life, they have no idea how much truth they're, they're, they're uh, actually speaking, you know, because of the number 64 in it. So then he goes deep into numerology as well, bro. A lot, like about knowledge being one, wisdom being second. So when love, love being the number 12, love being... The number 12 because L is the 12th letter in the alphabet. And then in the five percenter teachings, knowledge is one and wisdom is second, which is 12. So in order to love, you got to you gotta have the knowledge and the wisdom, the knowledge to acknowledge in the person and the wisdom to... I forget what, what the wisdom was with, but it just comes back to love being a number 12. It, it was crazy, bro. I was like, it opened my mind like, damn, man, like this okay. guy really knows okay. God, bro. Uh, look, I, I really love asking this question. It's a little, um, uh, how would I say? It's a little ridiculous, but uh, it, it, what is the meaning of life for you? The meaning of life for me at this point, ah, man, it's just to find happiness and live by your principles, man. At this moment, you know, because I know like the meaning of life is going to change as we get older. You know, maybe after I have kids, it's gonna be you know, taking care of my family, my kids, and teaching them the uh, right, the right way. As of right now, it's just being happy, being grounded, and staying true to myself, man. That's Beautiful. what life should be right now. Amazing. Uh, where can people find out more about you? They could find me on Instagram, bro. At Hope Is Music, you'll see everything I do. I don't have too many social medias. I don't try to keep up with a lot of social medias because then I'll go crazy checking right. out every single app. And I try not to look up my screen on my phone that much anymore. Mm. Just, just you know, when it's needed, if I have to write something and I don't have a book, or like if I have to check an interesting video or, or you know, check some music out. If not, I'm focusing on reading more. There it is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Hope is Music. I really enjoyed filming this today. I had a great conversation with you. Thank you. Um, and I hope you guys uh, support, tap in, do what you need to do. Who's going educated, man? Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, brother.